Papino, what's Papino? Deep Black is in the building. Salute to Cuzzo Dice. Um, salute to Cuzzo Dice. He's in the building. Uh, Father, you was in the building. Father, you was in the building. All goods in the building. Hate them for got a documentary on those two dudes. Definitely. Um, salute, salute, salute. We're taking us up town, baby. Get your um, get your pens and papers ready. Get your notebooks ready. This is some some Harlem shit. Too much from Harlem. Shit. Talk from Harlem. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the good brothers of Harlem, USA. We're going to take it. We're going to start from the top. And we're going to move right into the content. Now, I'm giving you 1989. 1989 was a different time in the five boroughs of New York City. It was an epidemic. It was a lot of money. You had the, the Maximus. You had the Sterlings. You had the Rabbits. You had the Vovos. And um, you got clubs. The Rooftop. You know, you had the Bentleys, the Zanzibars, the Wink, Skate Key, the host. This is this is hip hop's golden era. Um, New York City, I'm speaking about. You know, you had the the, the, the Bridge Wars, Karis One, MC Shan, but really, I, it was at the end of it. It was more sort of new Coogee rap music, uh, Marty Mar Control. We're giving you the feeling of New York City, like. Like in the like 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 when dudes is going to Hunt Twenty Fifth Street, then they would go to um Hunt Fortieth, Grand Tunes, Rucker Park. This is an era when dudes is going to the rooftop and then they would then they would wind up going to some place called Willy Burgers. Some people would have some had, had, had some money. They was going to Red Lobster on Central Ave and, and the Yonkers, or they was going to City Alley. On the east side, we had Green Kitchen. Um, you had the Steakhouse. We had Jackson Hole. We had One Fish, Two Fish. We give you the feeling of 89. 40 Belows was popping back then. The Snorkels, the Woolridges, the Rocky Coats. The streets was different. The temperature in the streets was different. There was a lot of guys getting a lot of money. Uh, there's a lot of names out there. We're not going to name all the names. There's a lot of names out there from the east side to the west side. Um, you got to keep in mind, when a lot of guys go, how was these guys getting all this money and there was no police? Well, there's a precinct called the 30th Precinct that covers a certain geographic of that side of Manhattan. I don't know where it starts at, but I, I believe it's from 145th to at least 155th or 151st Street. It's a 30th precinct. A lot of you guys that's, that was in the 90s may have heard about the, the 30th precinct from the Dirty 30. Now, they got caught up with some extortion ring from 92 to 93, but best believe that there was cops that was on the payroll way before them the drug units, before they had TNT, even when they created TNT. Because before TNT, you had the little drug task force, five, six cops, and these guys was on the payroll. Giving you the geographics, when you go, how was these guys having cheese lines? Because the most most likely the cops was on the payroll. That's how the, the, the dirty 30, get your pen out, you can Google this, is they, that precinct covers those areas. Um, just to say the least. Now, a lot of you guys may have heard about the Dirty 30. And, and, and we, we just give you a brief history about the Dirty 30. Um, the Dirty 30. S scandal took place between 1992 and 1995 in the New York City Police Department 30th Precinct Street in Harlem and was the largest collection of police officers charged with corruption in New York City in a month in almost a decade. A group of rogue officers led by Sergeant Kevin P. Nannery participated in various unlawful activities including civil rights 
conspiracy, perjury, extortion, grand larceny, and the possession and distribution of narcotics. The scandal led to a number of arrests of police officers and two suicides. Um, 33 officers were arrested, 13 officers were indicted. Now, this was the 90s when these officers got caught, but best believe they was around for the hair on ever because they precinct covers those areas that we hear about all these major hair on rings and drug rings uptown from the PCP runs to the hair on runs to the cocaine runs. So you have to understand when, when, when y'all speak about how was these dudes getting so much money and the police wasn't bothering them is because you have to, you know, you got to pay your way. Now, now that we leave in that story, there was an infamous club called The Rooftop. It's a skating rink, discotheque. It was something that was sort of different than like the fever. A lot of fly guys from Harlem would go there. Other than it being a roller skating ring slash club, it was a studio in there that we, we know about the Teddy Rallies. Um, we understand. A lot of people don't even know, understand the guy who actually owned the rooftop or one of the owners. He also own, owned Willy Burgers. He also owned the club, allegedly, where Alpo got assassinated at now. So these are, these are people that's a mainstay in Harlem. These are Harlem legends. Gus, shout out to Gus. A lot of you guys may have heard about Gus with the Tom Court situation. Allegedly, he robbed the club, and that led to a lot of issues in the street. A lot of people may have heard about Gus from Kumo D, Rooftop Records, Jive Records. You might have heard about Rooftop Records, K Vaughn, the classical two new rap generation, Teddy Riley, um, D Ferg. Yes, this is some Harlem history for you guys. And the rooftop was a club where the, the was was a was a club that featured the fashions of the crack era and the epidemic, the fashionable cars, the players, not just from Harlem but from Brooklyn, from Queens. Um, Brooklyn cats is most noted for coming and robbing guys. Shout out to the Polo Grounds, right across the street. Harlem was different, was moving fast. The money was changing, the cars was changing, the fashions was changing. Dope blocks were turning to coke blocks. Not that hair on went anywhere, but it's a new league of bosses now. It's new opportunities in the streets. Dudes just turning blocks that had no, no money on it to million dollar blocks. Shout out to the Polo Grounds, 155th, you heard? A lot of you guys that made King of New York, that's where Rucker Park is at, right across the street. King is the infamous Polo Grounds. Shout out to DJ Ron G, shout out to DJ Capone, you hear me? There's a lot of players on the west side. The younger boys were started coming up. And I told you, the fashions was changing, the Diddy Box was changing, the cars was changing. Dudes was wearing 140 dollars 40 belows. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uptowns was crazy. Spot builds. The Larry Bird joints. That's the fashion. That's the fashion joints. Delta Force. Let me get four pair of those. That's how the crack, that's that's what the that's what just, I'm just giving y'all what the crack ever was doing. You go into the sneaker store like Mr. G's on the east side or 125th by Dr. J's, of course, the chief of the state building. What's popping? What's popping? And dudes are going in. Let me get four pair of deltas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll get sneakers for a week. Diodorus. Let me get some Diodorus, the, the suede joints. Let me get two of those. That was the geographics of the streets in New York back then. Big H, six deuces, numbers. Salute to little Mario. We talked about the streets of New York, 88, 89. Big Daddy Kane was crazy on the radio back then. Raw, me and the biz. Someone rolled the riches, men at work. We had another club that was popping, Roseland. That was also a club that was popping around that time. You know the rest of them. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not gonna mention everything. This the ones that I, that I remember. Um, Studio 54 was still popping. Exactly the Rocky Shirling coach. 
was popping. So we here. I'm getting you onto the cloth that's not from New York. The cloth. The Rocky, the Rocky joke, joke. Public enemy. Facts. Public enemy. We said, listen to that on the benches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Rebel Rattle Cause and all that. Where we at? So now I'm bringing you to the claw. The thumbnails, the thumbnails, it's Harlem cats. So I, I don't get, I, I don't get, I don't, I don't get what you're speaking about. The thumbnail got nothing to do with what I'm talking about. But I'm not here to do a documentary on that. So again, you can't tell me what thumbnail I'm gonna put because I'm because somebody asked me, go Zeke, why you never post them? So I'm gonna tell you why I put that thumbnail up there. Because somebody said, Zeke, why you never put nothing up there of LA? You never show a picture of them. You talk about Harlem, but you don't show at least love to LA. There's thumbnails I got that got nothing to do with the content I'm talking about. So again, I'm just educating you. I'm just educating you. My a lot of my thumbnails they got nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I'm just showing love to people. You know what I'm saying? But I got nothing to do with the paid and full documentary. I'm 49 years old. What's wrong with you, man? So before GLA, you want to have this conversation, I'm going to give you the conversation. Do what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Now, now I just educated you. There's a whole bunch of my thumbnails that have nothing to do with the hell I'm talking about. Don't tell me what to do, brother. Again, let's get back to the content. Don't tell me what to do. Show and love to L.A. Rest in peace to L.A. He was outside, remember, in the 80s. Remember, he was outside. He was honorable, right? A lot of them thumbnails I can't put up because a lot of dudes are dishonorable. <laughs> yeah. I could put the newspaper article up, too, if I wanted to. If you don't be somebody that's 20 years old and try to educate somebody on the education. Don't put to put Rich Porter up. Am I... Am I <laughs> I, I'm gonna put the rooftop, but back to the story. <laughs> back, back. Let's get back to the lab. Get out of here, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? They got to get the fuck out of here. Go beat it, Cletus. You know what I'm saying? Like you crazy. What the fuck that dumb now got to do with the fuck I'm talking? I'm talking about 1989, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Back to the story. So now we get into the 89. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm taking the fuck out of here. So we talked the cloth. Everything was different. Shout out to Tony Lopez and them. Got the cars and all that. On the east side, west side, catch you had to, you had to, you know, a lot of dudes. Things was happening to dudes on the street, but a lot of it really wasn't drug wars. It was a lot of personal shit. Like dudes would blaze somebody girl, somebody went up for work, was good, was good. It was more a lot of that going on in the streets. So places like the rooftop, all the money cats would pull up to because it was a, it was a stage, it was a show. Not just the rooftop, but like Roseland, them Spanish cats was coming through with the you see, the clubs was the stage. Your car was the five star rims, the BBS rims. Y'all know what y'all know what New York was looking like. Shout out to you know what I'm saying. Everybody, and it wasn't just one name that was getting money. A lot of people was getting money. You just have more popular names. Exactly. A lot of dudes was getting money in the five boroughs, but the rooftop was just known as a place where a lot of money cats was going to. They was coming to. You feel what I'm saying? They was pulling up to, you heard? Now, let's speak about it. Shout out to the Upper West Side. She was on the Upper West Side. Shout out to the West Side. There was spots that dudes was going to. Everybody was getting money. That's what I'm going to say, though. If you was honorable in the streets, you got some work. If you had some type of honor, if you was able to be trustworthy, we're not talking about taking a pack. <laughs> I'm saying we're talking about, yo, son, I need to hold 125. I need to, I need to hold a big eight. That was our lingo back then. Let me hold a big eight, sir. 
happy because they don't know what the big A is. Yo, let me get the big A. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, 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 let me get his six dupes. That was our, that was lingo. That was lingo. That was lingo. Yo, son, I need, I need the whole story. I need a big A. Go hunt 10th Street, get the bottles. You know what I'm saying? Get crazy. Blah, blah, blah. Kick it to the top. Definitely shout out to Harlem, man. Shout out to fucking Harlem. Shout out to Bang Up Front. Harlem definitely set the stage for that. They put the forefront. Now, let me reset the page real fast. Let's know what's going on. The thumbnails me showing love to LA has nothing, may, may have nothing to do with this article I'm about to read, but LA did pass away allegedly at the rooftop. But before we get to the article, I have to get to, I got to get the feeling because everybody on my platform is not from New York City. So I got to give my, we have to, we have to give them the vision. Is that, you have to give them the vision. The, the people that's in Israel that's going, oh shit. Now remember, everything starts from the ground up. The dirty police helped a lot of dudes get money in Harlem. If y'all think that dirty priests only existed because of <laughs> exactly, they don't they don't know the lingo, they don't know the lingo. Speak to it, six dudes, big game. Let me get a quarter. No, I'm saying, let me get a quarter. That was lingo. Yo, son, what's up? Let me get a biggie before Biggie Smalls, my guy. Before Biggie Smalls, nigga. We've been saying biggies and all that <laughs> before Biggie. No disrespect to Biggie Smalls, but that was our lingo way before that. What you do is, I mean, that's what's it, but we got to educate y'all. Because when we don't educate y'all, what happens is, y'all just go, I watched a documentary and they broke the shit down. But I'm going to tell you what the streets was like. That's, <laughs> the police is what help dudes get rich. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The police is what help dudes to take it to the top to get their millions. To let you to let some of you dudes know that. Because if you have police on the payroll, because back then, before they had TNT, you had a drug unit, but you only had police just chasing guns. The gun unit was worse than the drug unit back then. Then they created TNT and TNT was sweeping blocks and sweeping the whole block up. Who remembers that? Who remembers when Rikers Island was almost at capacity? Because of the TNT sweeps in the five boroughs. I remember that. They had dudes sleeping in the gym. And they started letting dudes out. And then a new government, then a new governor came to place, started opening up these new jails, and then dudes started really going up top. This is the time when dudes is going to jail having four or five crack cells. This is when the sweet van had come and take the whole block. Smokers, people jogging, anybody was going to jail or when TNT came. Salute, salute, salute. Y'all, y'all learning something. This is what New York City was doing before the mass incarceration. The, the, there was crazy police on the payroll. Remember those sweeps? They take the whole block. Because Free base in the club began to hit the streets. You know what I'm saying? This is the difference in the game. So I'm giving you what the city was like. We can't forget about White Stone Movie Theater. Right over, right by, you know, by the, by, you know, you know, that's that salute, 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 Don Rico. You can't forget about White Stone Movie Theater, right? Remember the, the movie theater? See, what happens is a lot of you, White Stone's movie theater was popping. We already know White Stone Movie Theater was popping. You see Mad Bronx dudes did, Book Ave, you see the Spanish got the big gold chain. That's when you'll bump into a bunch of Bronx hustlers at White Stone Movie Theater if you wasn't really going through the Bronx. So it's an educating so, so, so I'm giving you what 88, 89 was feeling like. For those on the east side, you should go to this, a, 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 a weed spot called the bus stop on 110th Street. That was like a popular weed spot on the east side. One of the most popular, with the real popular. 
definitely shout out to Don Rico. Shout out to a Shuki mentality. They give you the feeling. Yeah, you good, man. Why, why, why you saw a movie theater was popping? That's where you see that like, it was like a late night movie theater. So you you pull up to um you pull up to um White Stone, that's where you see the Spanish dudes. Not this that, but Bronx Hus, not the Spanish, but like the Bronx bosses. Side block niggas. You see them look at that White Stone. White Stone right there in the Bronx. White Stone movie theater. That's what dudes is doing, man. You know what I'm saying? Right there. I think they chain it down now, turning that into um they try, I guess before I left, they were trying to turn it into like a outlet. I don't know if they got the money to do it, but they try to turn it into an outlet. Yeah, it's giving you the feeling of what New York was feeling like in 88, 89. Everybody was happy. I'm not gonna lie, it was a lot of through all the oppression, there was so much money, dudes was happy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They was really happy. Ah, oh, so okay, you remember when it opened up, no doubt. Now, um, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. Right? So I gave you the. So I, is that? Yeah, you, you can't. You, the chicken bags are still popping back then. The Cess, the Buddha. The only place I remember, dude used to go uptown to like Dykeman to get some type of. It was stronger weed. I don't know what kind. Of, I don't know what kind of weed it was, but I know that dudes was paying twenty dollars for this shit. They would go uptown by like Dykeman or by like One Six Eight and, and Broadway or Amsterdam or Saint somewhere up there. They was going uptown. I think it was Dykeman though. They was going uptown to get some type of. It was it was a more high potent weed. Back then, we talking about back then, 88, 89, dudes are hopping in cab and go up town. Yo, we're going to Dykeman on, on a Friday night. Come them pillows is like this. You know what I'm saying? Like this. <laughs> this is what dudes is doing. Yeah, they're going uptown. Hopping in them cabs, going uptown. You know what I'm saying? Definitely on the east side. Remember, I'm up from the east side, so they was taking them calves, shooting up town. Definitely shout. You know what I mean? It was. It, it, it was. Like I said, it was shit going on, but it was a lot of money. It was a lot of love. Dudes was bumping heads in spots. That's why when you got you got to understand, dudes was bumping heads in spots. The only people that wasn't able to get those type of passes of love that was important was dudes that was telling. Dudes that was telling, you know, they was getting money, they had to lay low. Because, was, you know what I'm saying, they had, they was low. And you got some dudes that didn't care if dudes was telling because they was feeding them. You got to remember what was out there back then. The Jerry Kill Posse, remember the Jerry Kill niggas on, on the west side? You had the Purple City on the east side? And a bunch of shit going on. Y'all remember this shit? A whole bunch of shit. Broadway, B-Way, Slay was crazy. You go up on 135th and you walk up the block, they went up on you. This shit was like it was legal. You walk down the block, get off the bus, you get off the train, walk upstairs. Yo, Bobby, come here. They walk into a bodega. Yo, listen, what you looking for, Papa? Yo, let me get a big A. Be right back. You yo go, come back, give me what you want. You can physically walk back to the train with no police contact. <laughs> None. Yo, we used to go to Blimpies and Leslie, right there, you know, Hump 4, what's that, Hump 4, Hump 141 in Amsterdam, right by the cab stand, right by NY, um, 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 City College. Come on, man. Don't tell us about documentaries. We was outside. Don't tell me about the documentary. You wasn't there or outside. Get, get your pen out, take your notes. Get your pen out and take your notes. If you can't tell me about Blimpies, You know what I'm saying? Get get your pen and get your notes. I remember that Bob Lemon flow. I was younger. Yeah, the, the, the Bob Lemon flow was crazy. Taino always had that flow, that hair on flow. Even when Purple City had the shit, and they bought that, they had that Stingray. That neighborhood always been that hair on shit. From 116th Street, Red Apple, Dope, all that shit, all that shit, that that cold on from Lex. 
to, to Second Avenue, always been mad dope streets, bro. That whole little, from there to the 110th Street. That's when the 110th was crazy. Not by Clinton Project. 110th for Lex. Between Lex and Park. It's crazy. Hair on Century. From 110th, I don't even say 110th, like 106th to 125th. It's crazy. That's just the hair on flow. Come on, man. So again, you would have to bend outside. So when dudes caught the crack flow, that was just something different. The crack flow was just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bringing you to the ever in the cloth. Now, the reason why we're up this morning for is because I think we talk about the same. It's time to get into the content. People are having these conversations. They're showing the cars for the glory, but they're not saying why they got so much money, right? But I'm going to tell you, it wasn't because dudes were scared of dudes. The dudes were notorious. Dudes had police on the payroll. So you have police on the payroll, and you eating with dudes. Why go to war with them? Dudes, this is how it went back in the day. Because there wasn't no, dudes wasn't catching crack conspiracy, federal conspiracies in New York City in 88. They, they was chasing the hair on niggas. They was chasing the boy Georges and the Jose Lethos and all of them. They wasn't thinking about niggas that was on the block selling crack. That crack shit was, to them, they looked at crack. It ain't that the police didn't know what it was. It was, a, it came, it derived from the clubs. Free base. That was a club thing. Cocaine was too expensive. Then it got cheaper, and then it got affordable, and then that shit went to the haywire. But that went to go to show that cocaine was a popular drug. Just like some of these hats is popular, it was a part of being popular to a generation of dudes sniffing coke and shit like that. That was a popular thing. That's what dudes and popular that was popular was doing. And some of these clubs you went to, they had back rooms where dudes would pay a hundred dollars across the country, and they'll be smoking some free base. You don't know what free base is? They got JoJo Dancer, the shit that Richard Pryor was smoking on, I almost killed him with the ether. <laughs> and you had some rocket scientists on the west side that created some shit that. You put the shit in some shit with some baking soda, swing that shit around, boom, it's ready rock. And that shit went to the moon. They start throwing speed in that shit. They start throwing B12 in that shit. They started throwing that B12 in that shit. They start throwing Bacardi in that shit. And these niggas started wilding. We're talking about, we're talking about when at, for a generation, smoking crack was popular. It was, so police wasn't running down on niggas that was really, unless you was some Spanish cat that had 30 bricks. You're talking when cocaine cost $100 a, 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 a gram. Then the game changed with the dimes and the 20s, 0.2s of 0.3s. I give niggas a half a gram for $10. Niggas are losing their mind. So let's be talking about the ever. A lot of dudes didn't fall off. A lot of dudes, that's why you hear a lot of the legends say. You know what I'm saying? See? A lot of legends say a lot of them were smoking crack before they got rich. The Gato, the Gito, some from, from Eater War, that's what he said. The Latin King guy, King Tone, he said, I was smoking crack. Boom. Um, Lenny from the Wild Cowboys, one of the one of this, the the Cepalito brothers. I don't know if it was Lenny or Nelson, but one of them said that they was getting hot. I seen dudes, you know what I'm saying? That before they started getting money, they was getting hot. But the high I seen was a lot of dudes was fucking with the rulers. That's crack and weed. Every place is different. A lot of dudes going to these clubs smoking coolies. Coolies is coke with cigarettes. Peace, peace. It's a history lesson right here. So now you got this popular drug. It's called crack. You put it in bottles. 
You wanna you wanna corners. Popular. You got bus drivers that was remember a lot of our first customers. Shout out to Millionaire Cali out there. My man Millionaire Cali. I can't forget about you, bro. Shout out to my man Millionaire Cali from um 145th Edge Cone. Shout out to the Spanglers out there and all that. Me and Millionaire Cali was popping. We're talking about when a lot of dudes' first customers were civil service workers. Dudes that on the weekends, they party, bus drivers, cops, BCW workers, they be partying. Because back then, an eight ball cost at least $350. An eight ball. A hundred dollars a gram. And Jose and John and, and Little Pito, they wasn't playing. A hundred dollars a gram. So while they sniffing and smoking the cigarettes and shit like that, they hear about the shit the niggas is doing in the club, yo. That's why back then the chemist was so important. Just like the chemist that do the, the water shit, that do the mixtures, the, the chemist is important. Because a motherfucker would want to party all weekend and have a chemist, bro. The chemist. Because everybody didn't know how to fuck with the, the my, my mom's is young. Rest in peace, her soul. Her, her click was fuck with that cocaine crazy. That's, that's, she was young. That was her generation. Yeah. A lot of dudes, but then a lot of dudes began to slip. That's when you had uh, more robberies, like senseless robberies. Let's go into that. You had the snatch and chain shit going on. Dudes were snatching pocketbooks crazy because the woo shit was a whole new generation. It's these niggas that's 18, they got cocaine habits. Facts. They had cocaine habits. Remember, they get together, get their little ones, and, they get their twos and fuels together, they get $100, that gram goes between six heads. Drinking on that bum ass Coke 45 or that old English or champagne, pink champagne. The fuck out of here, know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, facts called called, called NYC. We just talk about it. We have to talk before I read what I'm gonna read. Normally I go straight into the content, but I'm realizing that a lot of people are not from New York City. Definitely, definitely, definitely. We on the well, yeah, yes, yes, we on the dark side. Click oh, we on the dark side. Definitely shout out to 050 trying to bring movie. For those that don't know, me, him, actually him, he had he came with the idea of the hashtag, him, me. Harlem legend, Average Chatter, Saladin. I think we are the funders of the 050 China Brim movement, but those guys is moving. So we put, we, we put together a hashtag, and they, these are the voice of the streets. They are the voice of the streets. Plug into them. If you're not plugged into them, 050 China Brim movement, they're definitely plugged into the streets of what's going on now. Definitely. It is what it is. We do what we do. You know? heard? That, that's 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 just and that's that's where we're gonna keep and that's where that's at. The funding for you know what I'm saying the movement keeps moving. Shout out to Smitty Blow Dollars. Shout out to no no wax and all of them. We here, but let's get back to the content. We're talking about you know we was young. Most of us, our mothers was getting high, but remember. Back then, we was told because the hair on hustle. Remember, we come from the Jevil Carter era. Cocaine was a rich man high. Not just white. Niggas that got money was fucking with that powder. Not all of them, but a lot of them. A lot of the gangsters was fucking with the, the angel dust. A lot of niggas was fucking with the PCP, the white shit, the, the crystals. Then you had some niggas that was fucking with the, they call it Zoo Bang. You had Zoo Bang. The Zoo Bang was the crack or the coke with the angel dust. Actually, I think the Zoo Bang was before Woolies to keep it old, to keep it a hundred with you. Because a lot of them old school niggas that got busy, that's what they were smoking. Because angel dust was the epidemic dust, that water. That was the epidemic. Cause you could buy a bag of dust. A bag of dust was cheaper than buying a gram of coke. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That be JP in the building, man. We here, we hollow. 
East Harlem, West Harlem, we're just giving y'all, just giving y'all what the temperature was. So now dudes are cleaning up now. But this party drug is now hitting the streets. Now you don't have to go to the Studio 54 to get high. You don't have to go to Roseland and be in the back getting high. You don't have to go to the rooftop to get high. Now it's on your corner now. Now it's in your candy stores now. Now it's in your lobbies. A lot of the kids that was 12, 13 years old, they 15, 16, they got blocks. They using words like, yo, let me get a six deuce. Let me get a big eight. They, they, they chumming the old 25s down. He, the old 25s, they busting them down. Y'all know the blocks? Busting them down. I had to go to 110th Street in Lex to get my bottles, allegedly. The raises. We had to, we talking about fuck the digital scale. We had triple beans. Some shit you can't throw out the window. That's how much the police wasn't fucking with you. And even when TNT was out, if, 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 when TNT passed your block, the drug unit did not bother you unless you did some stupid shit. Housing cops won't bother you if you, if you ain't make no noise in the projects. It's having this history lesson. 88, 89. A lot of niggas is paying a lot of cops. So that's how dudes, it wasn't that dudes was telling. Dudes was doing business with the, yo, they're about to sweep your TNT coming. Wanna know how we got worried about TNT? The documentary can't tell this? TNT would sweep every block. So a lot of customers, they'd be like a rush. Motherfuckers, ah! They'd be like the, the night of the living basin. Shit was crazy. They get to your block, yo, Z, get out of here. What happened? TNT, that's in the 102nd Street. We out. <laughs> we shut it down. Yeah, exactly. Yo, 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 smile, it was popping. Hunt 12. You already, you already know, Hunt 10. Right there on the corner of the, the train station, bro. Get out the train station, right there, get the bottles. Yo, let me get a box. We wasn't buying a pack. We was buying boxes. Yo, yo, ah, let me get a box of them shits, bro. I remember, yo, 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 smiley. Remember there was a drought of baking soda, bro. Niggas is going to Queens to get baking soda. There was a drought of baking soda in our hood. Can't get no baking soda. Niggas is running to Queens. Niggas is going to the Bronx to buy baking soda. <laughs> Hell yeah. Get the whole box. Beat it like this. That's how much you wasn't worried about police. A box of bottles, raises, Niggas is buying, let me get eight boxes of baking soda. <laughs> I don't even know how to cook. We had every hood got a crackhead called Rhonda. I don't know. But every my neighborhood, we had Rhonda. Rhonda was getting all of us. That was my first chef. Rhonda, come here, stupid. I need you to put this together real fast. I know she was getting me with the water and all that. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Come on, son. Because we was outside. We was a young, we was a young crazy nigga that was renting a cab. Yo, yo, Bobby, take me to the for one for one. Hop out. Yo, I was in the building one time. I got a story for you niggas, man. Yo, I was in the building one time. It was a hunt for first across the street from the park, Hamilton place. I never knew. Two years later, that building made a million dollars a day. On Hamilton between 141 and 142, that tenement building, me and my man Harry, rest in peace, Harry, went to get some grizzlies from over there. That shit was crazy. He was like, yo, the flow is crazy, son. You know what I'm saying? We pulled up like it was crazy. These niggas ran this shit like an operation. There was, and you know what's so funny? There was no police in sight, bro. You said, them niggas have you sit in a crib. Now, one thing I'm going to say about these Dominicans, it's weird. They have you sit in an apartment with some type of Jesus Christ statue with water and pennies in this shit. You're like, what the fuck God got to do with me buying these grams? 
So if you was outside, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. A nigga had me sit in the crib with mommy. Yo, come on, Bobby. Come, 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 come in the house. Mommy cooking chuletas, beans, and rice. He, he, he leave. I'll be right back. Give me the money. Come right back here, Bobby. We ain't, I'm in a nigga crib. Nigga kids running around crazy. Shit was like that. That's how crazy it was. And y'all call it Sugar Hill. Some niggas called it Dominican Land. You know what I'm saying? Well, we be sitting in the joint. They got the big ass mirror. They had the mirror. They had the, the Mary statues and the and the water, the water and the pennies and change. I'm like, what the fuck? Crosses all over the room. He gonna get me 200 grams. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, what the fuck is this? They got the Bible sitting there. The Bible's on the table. One thing about that's what I'm saying. Everybody look at the drug game totally different. I swear to God, if you was outside, son, this is this is this now. This is on a hunt for first between hunt for first and first for second. Allegedly, the answer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right in the living room. You know what I'm saying? I'm mad nervous in there. I'm looking at Jesus. Like, what type of shit is this? Yo, Bobby, don't worry about me right back. You're the only nigga in the room, son. <laughs> Hell, they was super religious. Like, they must have felt like, like they got blessed with this shit. I'm in the crib. Like, what the fuck? Then one time you went to go get some grizzies. We're in a apartment with like 20 niggas. What type of shit? You know, they had us in the crib with like 20 of us. With all type of crosses and Jesus on the wall. And I'm like, yo, we the spot. Now, mind you, you're in a room with 20 random niggas. Some niggas is buying a gram of coke. Some niggas is buying an eight ball. You got some niggas coming from Jersey. They buying an ounce. They got the blue head niggas. They looking for a scrape. Shit was crazy, son. He like, yo, I'm going to, yo, yo, son, this shit, you can't make this shit up. Just trying to re-up. That's what I said, yo, son, we got we to we do better than this shit. You know what I'm saying? How you in a crib with 20 random niggas looking to re-up? <laughs> Everybody in the room together like this. Hey, like 20 of us. Yo, Bobby, come back. Yo, hit, 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 hit. That Hamilton spot was safe. I'm telling you, niggas was getting caught by the cab niggas sometimes. You hop in the wrong cab and police will bloop you. But 90% of the time, <laughs> that we shot the Buffalo. You know what I'm saying? This is what this, I'm giving you the feeling of what New York is like. It was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Now the rooftop was like the like about my way. We had the St. Francis parties. We had the Hunter Street parties. Those were our stages. B and B's. But the club that stuck with the name, you had spots of the red parrot was popping. You had spots that was popping. But you knew the rooftop was a stage. Not just blacks went there, Puerto Ricans went there, Dominicans went there. It was a spot where niggas could be fashion. Even the Brooklyn niggas that was coming to steal. So when Brooklyn niggas came to the rooftop, it was always some larceny shit. Niggas was. And I'm not, I don't know how true it is, but they said because of the rooftop, because of some Brooklyn niggas, that's why the rooftop got shut down. Niggas went acting crazy. Brooklyn niggas, now you know it's real. You take a three hour train ride from fucking East New York, nigga. To 155th, just to rob niggas, son. Nigga was in catching cabs. What's in the room with the shotgun? I'm saying, you sit in the room, nigga got a four fifth out with a triple beam scale. Looking at you crazy. I'm telling you, these niggas, yo, son, don't know a lick of English, but know how to count. You be looking like this with the sun scale looking around, look at you like this. Papa. 28. Oh, okay. Don't tell us about the game, man. One thing about one thing about what, what, what we're bringing to the table, it's not documentary. It's shit that we experience. I want to be all over the place. I don't like being all over the place. That's not to give you the police. Because a lot of dudes are paying the police. And that the major, what you guys don't understand is, one of the major big drug corridors. A Harlem was patrolled by the 30th precinct, <laughs> which is known for dirty cops. 
They just got caught in the 90s. But they was around in the 80s and the 70s because all those major drug blocks. So dirty, dirty. I had to give it to you all. I take it back uptown to the scene. Willie Burgess, right? Shout out to Savoy, Club Savoy and all. I can't forget about my Bronx, nigga. You know what I'm saying? The Dirty 30. You know what I'm saying? The Dirty 30, you know what I'm saying? Um, this came from the New York Times. 1989, February 5th, 1989, from the New York Times, which is, which is one of the most exclusive and top ranked newspapers in the country was written in 1989 and this is what it says two young men at the rooftop two young men were killed and a teenage girl was wounded early yesterday morning when two men opened fire outside a roller skating rink in harlem police said the shooting occurred about 3.30 a.m. as the young man and the girl was getting out of a taxi cab at rooftop roller skating ring in disco. Remember, disco was still popping back then. And what year is this? Oh, 1989. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So disco was still around in 89 for those that wasn't going outside. Disco was still around. They were playing a couple of discos. Out to DJ Gucci B. Shout out to my man Big J, the bodyguard. You know, uptown, my man. You know what I'm saying? Starsky and Busy B and that whole city. Like they called it the Disco Tech. Maybe you know what I'm saying? The shooting occurred about 3:30 a.m. as the young man and the girl was getting out of a taxi cab at rooftop roller skating and disco ring at 218 West 155th Street. He said. The two men appeared to be waiting for them and fired as soon as they stepped out, said a police spokesman, Sergeant Raymond O'Donnell. He said the shooting appeared to be related to drugs. The two men both at the scene, both killed at the scene, were identified as Stefo, Stefo Jameson, 18 years old, of 1827 Arrow Avenue in the Baychester section of the Bronx. I used to live in the Baychester section of the Bronx which is Co-op City, Section 4. I, I, I live right behind in um, Truman High School on Alcott Place. For those that know about Co-op City, I lived in I lived there before I came to St. Louis. That's where I was at, in the Bronx, or for um, Alcott, right behind Truman. And Truman's on Baychester Avenue. For those that's not from the Bronx, that's, that's like North Bronx. In the Baychester Section. Who was shot several times in the body in Vaughn Cooley, 21 of 217 West 127th Street in Manhattan, who was shot in the head. Their comparison, their companion, a 15-year-old girl whose name was not released because of her age, was shot in the kneecap. She was listed in good condition at a Harlem hospital. The two gunmen escaped. The police said that they found a 32 caliber handgun in Mr. Cooley's pocket, but that, that but he did not fire it. You know what I'm saying, you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. See what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? That's history right there. That's at the rooftop club. See? That's history right there. If he wasn't outside, he wasn't outside. Again, the thumbnail is just me showing love to L.A. Because that's my cousin Dice's uncle. And it's an honorable show. You know what I'm saying? I want to know when Thomas was one of them cats that, 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 that was in the dumb bar. That part of Harlem was lit. Like Colonial, Dunbar, all that. See, a lot of people don't understand there's a lot of families that come from where you're from. That side, that side of the, you know what I'm saying? That side of Harlem, like the Singletons, the Outlaws, and so and so. You know what I'm saying? 
Shout out to my man, um, Omar Singleton. You know what I'm saying? As you know, you know. Harlem was lit. That was the stage. A lot of y'all may have heard about the outlaws because of small Paul and the preacher situation. But those families are large in their territory. And actually, last time I was in New York, one of the one of the singletons owned a juice bar or, or, or over there in that complex. You know what I'm saying? This it was a different time, party people. It was a different time. That was the stage. 8th Avenue, 7th Avenue. Oh, those are the stages. You get fresh and depth and work on Lennox. It was wild. It was like it was bananas. But you had to been outside for that. You would have had to been outside for that. It's gentrified just a little bit to some of them blocks. But they but they made, I don't front, man. They made probably look good. So on the West Side Cats, they made looking they 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 made probably looking good. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. They made they they they, they from the Dominicans to the African Americans to the Boricuas, they made I'm gonna front, they made Paul's they they made being poor look totally different. Like, 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 like don't give a choice. You had a lot of stores, sneaker stores. 125th Street was still lit. What? 125th, you take pictures of 125th. Dudes would go to 125 just to take flicks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Harlem Week was bananas. Harlem Week was bananas, man. You know what I'm saying? Now, one thing I'm going to say is, when he was outside, those was movies, bro. Dudes would go to Willie Burgers just the city was at Willy Burgers with the superstars. I'm going to tell you what cars is popping too. We can't forget about the Honda Accords with the five star rims. We can't forget the Honda Accords is popping. We can't forget about the Honda Accords. Dudes is getting their cars, you know what I'm saying? You see me, the Honda Accords come through with the Honda Accords with the five star rims, the MPVs is crazy. Kit it up, leather seats and all that. The Wrangler Jeeps. Where to my time? When Hunts Point Strip Club was. Y'all want to see what New York looked like for you out of town? Look at HPO Hunts Point. <laughs> the Hunts Point of, of, of the 90s, that's when you're speaking about crews like the Brian Ab Boys. Um, and, and, and a host of others that was in Hunts Point section. Yeah. Yeah. But it's chomping out of time. You know what I'm saying? Hook is at the point. You want to see what New York looked like from, and because he had strip clubs out there. Y'all keep seeing the prostitutes. It's about the strip club. Dudes is the go. Remember, yo, remember the, the spot in the Bronx? The Golden Lady was popping. The Golden Lady was popping that spot. It was spots that dudes was getting money. A lot of these money cats was bumping heads at these strip clubs. I told you, a lot of these dramas really had nothing to do with the blocks. It had to do with females. A lot of, a lot of the beefs was over chicks. Might have been a, a, a somebody who woke up one morning and said, I'm going to put work on the block today. But it was chicks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, son. So you had to be on side for that. So when you speak about 88, 89, 90, at least 90, let's take this a little bit to 90, we can't forget about all that. The streets was changing, remember? Remember, when, 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 we, spoke, when, we, when we spoke about the septic cons and low lives, that was our high school days. When dudes was going to school, you was bumping heads with dudes that was popping, but, but the low lives, the low lives, low lives, shout out, to, shout out to them, they became popular culture. Where at one point, we looked at Brooklyn cats from how they dressed. Like, for some reason, they had a, they, don't, they may not realize it, the low lives, but they had a popular effect on Brooklyn and Queens niggas. Definitely like, probably like South Side niggas, North Side niggas, where 
They wore polo. They was more dip. Brooklyn always been fashionable, but they was getting on that dip polo, Lower East Side. Cause he used to like a lot of Lower East Side characters on their polos and polo mocks and Benetton specs and all that. That spec shit wasn't an uptown thing. Yeah, I mean, you may have some uptown cats that was wearing specs, but all that polo and Benetton and Norley, you was, was killing the Nordica and the Calvins, shit like that. Hell yeah. They bought some type of big colorful building over there. Debbie shot the white from Southern Bell. Debbie shot the West Side St. Louis. She in the building, man. Had to give you a quick Harlem history lesson. Rooftop. Two individuals passed away. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, Julie Richmond days is crazy. Remember, Richmond was crazy. And that was my zone school, my area. That was my zone. Richmond, Julie Richmond High School. My man's went to art and design. My man suddenly went to art and design. My other man's, they went to Seward Park. <laughs> so they went to school. All those cats in the LES. A lot of LES cats was dressing like Brooklyn cats. You see, I used to call some of my man's like, yo, y'all, y'all like a missing part of. Oh, you want the, oh, you want the Seward too? Oh, they went to, um, they used to all dress like you used to call them like the, the, the second part of Bushwick. A lot of them, a lot of them Puerto Ricans just dressing like Brooklyn cats. Yes, yeah, son. Oh, that was your zone too. Yeah, yeah, you're in the same neighborhood. That, that, Julie Richard was this, was was the zone. But me, my man Wiggs, my man Ed Medina, we all went to um Norman Thomas. I went to on Thirty Third. When I went to Thomas, I went there with Big Vito, Cato, rest in peace, Albert from the YTC, a bunch of niggas, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, but, I, but from my block, from my hood, I went with like Ed Medina Wiggs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 Julie Richmond. That, that was the zone, that's the zone school. Yeah, that's why I, that, that's just, I went to Norman Thomas on 33rd, but that was my zone, half my block with the fucking Richmond, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Half my hood went there. My man Tyree and all of them, they all, they all went there. I'm from Washington, you know what I'm saying? It's funny how you just said this. Because where he at, right? Little history lesson again, 88, 89. Now I'm from the east side. I'm from East Harlem. I'm from Washington Project. I, I used to always go to the west side with Cato. Cato used to be me all through there, you know what I'm saying? Are you from Johnson? My man Joseph Brady from over there. My man Joseph. I used to be in Tav. I used to be in Tav when Tav was fighting against Johnson, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, because I grew up with Matt Jack and all of them. I grew, I grew up with Matt Jack and all of them. That's what I grew up with, you know what I'm saying? That's what I, I like, like Frank Nitty and all of them, and that's what I grew up with. <laughs> Johnson on the east side, yo, on 12. What what school is over there? That's 102 or some shit like that, right? That shit on Park Avenue, and 112 from Park. I used to play. I used to play football in there. Yeah. Nah. The part of Taft I was there was on 115th Street. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I grew up with all of them, man. That's when Freck. Well, I mean, we was out there. Um. Yeah, Jamie O. Yep. <laughs> Jamie O. Yeah. Yo, he locked up again. He got like 25 years. He used to be with Money and Kia and all them little niggas, man. Remember Money and Kia from, from, from PSA, from PS5 building? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I knew all them niggas, man. Money and Kia, um, Kalau and all of them. My grandmother lived in Tav. She was on 15th Street. I lived in the same, my grandmother lived in the same building as Little Ab. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember Jamie he had a, yeah, I think it, some shit happened with him and Karate Mike back in the day. I'm not gonna throw that online, but you know that shit happened with Karate Mike and his brothers. Uh, some shit happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember, we was playing tag back in the days, bro. Remember that dirt. Remember that pool. Remember that. Remember, remember, not that pool. The fucking um, the slide. Hunt Trump shooting tag. They had to pop and slide, bro. Remember, I, my grandmother was on 15th Street. My, my grandmother was right there on 15th and 70th. You know what I'm saying? 
Then we rise up, my nigga Mikey B's in the building. Mikey B's in the building. You know what's funny? Yo, Mikey, my grandma lived in the building that Gigi, girl, Pamish used to live in in Tab. What's this nigga name, man? Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry's sister was fucking with my man Gigi. That's that's Mikey B's, you know what I'm That's the bro. You know what I'm saying? Recipe Gigi. You remember little Dirty Harry from, 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 what's that, 70, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, sir. You know what I'm saying? It's how small the world is. It's how small the world is, bro. My grandmother lived in town. Lived on the same floor with Doby. Jackie. Um, right next to a little Jackie. Oh, nah, 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 nah. Yeah, little Ivan, that's my guy. Nah, this kid ain't even called Dirty Harry and Taff. Not, not, not the DJ, nigga. Yeah. Yo, remember, I went with little Harry. I remember when little Ivan was running around with Arnold with that lethal weapon before they caught the fair case and all that. We talking about 1990 and all that, bro. Last time I seen little Ivan, I was in, um, this is 9-5. We was in Austin together. <laughs> That's what the middle of <laughs> Remember, it was him and Arnold before Arnold caught that Fed case. They all was in, um, they they they, they read there by, one, by 116th Street. <laughs> That's you had the Free Willy, the Purple Rain shit was a little different. I said, you know what I mean? Big George on the other side. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already know the sign when Big George is alive, rest in peace, on my 16th of the crazy. Bro, Grandma, I, I grew up with these niggas. I played tag with little Ralph, you know, little Chris and them niggas playing football and all that, man. Oh, now, um, Mikey B, there's a kid named they call Dirty Harry from, from my building, from Grandma building. His girl was Gigi's girl. His sister was Gigi's girl. The one that went to college at SUNY Albany. That was his girl, bro. That, 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 don't say that. That was. Which one? Who, who says he's just messing with? Um, Chris and them? Little Ralph? I think Ralph is a fucking bus driver now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so, I remember when son, I'm going to tell you when I was out, definitely out. They had the airplanes. Them Puerto Rican niggas would, would, would fly the planes in the park a lot, bro. Now, I went past there. Yeah, I or oh, Ivan's sister, Jeff, again. Yeah. Somebody said he passed away. I'm like, what? You know what I'm saying? But I was my man, who Ivan. Short ass Puerto Rican Ivan. It's me, him. Arnold. Arnold. <laughs> That's when the, the, the water game was crazy. Those are the, I remember they was right there on Madison, son. Yes, yeah, right there on Madison. That's when Kojak had the store. Remember Kojak right there, right there on, 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 on the hill. You know what I'm saying? Right, right there on the hill. That's how small the world is, man. I mean, little Ivan, man. Pigeon toe. That's my seat. The nigga was. Ah, he's still alive, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They all call me Ziggy. I don't know fucking because Mad Jack started that stupid shit. Ziggy, Ziggy. Shout out to Mad Jack. I love you, my nigga. But he started the whole Ziggy. They call me Zo Ziggy. I'm talking about Ziggy. Little Ziggy. Mad little Ab. I heard this locked up in PA, but I hope he's home. Tai, that's my cousin. That was my cousin. Rest in peace to Tai, that's my cousin. He's been with Dirty Darnell and all of them. Rest in peace, Dirty Darnell. Yeah. That's, I remember when he first started that FTW shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Boy, man. Shout out to my man, D Murder, 115th. You heard? See? Now, mind you, the shit we talking about it's still, yeah, yeah, Dirty Darnell. I was on an island with him in 9 1. That's my guy, Fishy. You know what I'm saying? That's in peace, Dirty Darnell. But it's talking about the, 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 that time 88, 89, 90. Shit was changing. Shit was changing. The rooftop was a conversation still. Then everything started to change, man. You know what I mean? So we're giving you the feeling. We took you uptown. I don't think it's just like, damn, son, this thing is sick. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? This nigga Zeke. My grandmother lived in Taft. My cousin, name was Toby the De- Bose. I think he got murdered. I think somebody tried to rob him and they killed him. Little Toby, that's my cousin. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's my little cousin. That's my little cousin. 
because my family is tight knit over there. His brothers, his uncles, his his moms is my cousin. You know what I'm saying? His moms is my no. His pops is my cousin, Anthony. Anthony DeBose. Timothy DeBose. That's my cousin too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Little Tim Peanut Head. <laughs> that's my cousin. Shout out to cousin. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we all family, tight knit family. We're from the Bahamas. That's my grandmother's side from the from, from, from the Bahamas. That's why when I moved downtown, when I moved to Lex, a lot of Jews in my hood went to PS198. But you know, over there, yeah, 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 Sonny, yeah, yeah, he got to a bike accident. That's how he was fucked up. He got to a bike accident back in the day. But he had a red car back in the day. That nigga saved my life one time. He had the red car, I think it was the Benz or some shit like that, the drop top shit. He was killing him. Kid named Papito. Rest in peace, Papito. You know what I'm saying? Some shit happened with some niggas on my block over some work. This Puerto Rican niggas took over the corner. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. The BMW facts. He had to he saved my life one time. He saved my life one time. You know what I'm saying? He saved my life. Cause the shit happened with Papito on my block on Lex. Some shit. You know, Kevin had the red pathfinder. He was doing business with a nigga on my block. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Red, we had the, the pathfinder. And those are, <laughs> Yeah, we know each other, nigga. We was on the island together. <laughs> 1991. <laughs> we was in the court pits together. It was me, you, Kev Force, little brother, Mojo. It was 1991, my nigga. And, and I think I think you had cigarettes. If that's you, you had cigarettes. And niggas kept trying to ask you for cigarettes. I was like, nah, nah, nah. And, I, and we was kicking it. Jerry little brother. <laughs> yeah, son. Cause they kept trying to ask you for cigarettes. So I was like, nah, nah, son. Like, nah, nah, chill. We was in the car pin together, bro. Cause you was like, cause you had somebody asked you for a cigarette, you was like, boom. And them bum niggas like, get him, don't get a cigarette. Nah, 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 he good. Nah, nah, don't get those niggas nothing. And niggas is like, you know what I'm saying? Was, I used to see you in the, the little library a lot. Yeah, son. I'm like, I said, that's when I seen you. You was on 12th and 3rd. Right by, right by that corner store. But I was on the move. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, son. I was on, we was in the corn pins together. Darnell was in there with us, too. Dirty Darnell was in there. And Crow was, and Crow was in there with us. That nigga from the west side, the niggas that was robbing um, Nate. They, the, the niggas that was... Them niggas that was robbing the what's his name? The um shout out to my nigga, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas is robbing the um the Chinese restaurants. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We were always in the court pits together, all that hall of shit. All right, we was all in the court pins together. We was like, you know what I'm saying? Because you had, you had, I remember you had, I remember you had, you had the pack of cigarettes, bro. And somebody asked you for one. I forgot which one of them niggas asked you. But Darnell, we was always in there together. Some niggas asked you. The dirty nigga Supreme, I think, was in there with suit. That's, hold on. Supreme, he had just robbed some to his jacket. He took some jacket in the corn pants. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say the nigga's name because niggas saw yo, Zeke be doing too much. But the, the dirty, he told a nigga asked you with a sick. He's like, nah, nah, like, nah. So I was like, nah, nah, nah. He, ain't he was like, nah. He told niggas no. Nah, they didn't even get those cigarettes, man. And you think it's like, yo, let me get another one of those other funny shit. This is what you can smoke on Rikers Island. Now I'll always see you inside the um like the little library, but that's when Jerry was, was at that time, Jerry was, I think, was recuperating from the motorcycle accident, bro. <laughs> my nigga. <laughs> me and Jerry, we go back to the boys' club, my guy. You all went to the boys' club on a hundred fucking the level sheet. <laughs> me, him, Jerry Tisdale. A rock, all of us. We all went together. That's why I always show love to my niggas on the east side, bro. Look how small the world is. Look how small the world is. We was in the court pit together. Yes, yeah, son. We was in the court pit together, bro. I had a punk TNT so I was mad at a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, son. That's why I always show love to the, to the people. But I'm like, yeah, still that's my man. 
it was a, you know what I'm saying? I, I remember to, to kiss the Papito, he shot my man Leslie in the leg, you know what I'm saying? Over some shit on my block, on Lex. And um, so some other nigga jumped out the window. I happened to be standing by a nigga that jumped out the window talking crazy to the nigga. So I'm in front of my building and a certain nigga on my block goes, yo, there goes Deke right there. So when Jerry was with the nigga, so when Jerry looked, he like, who, talking about him? Nah, 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 that's why he saved my life, bro. You know what I'm saying? He was like, nah, Papito, nah, that's family right there. He good, he good. And you know, Leslie Papito died in front of Taino, right? I think his girl shot him with some crazy shit like that. Some crazy shit they said. He was downstairs and he lined them up. But see, a lot of these niggas wasn't outside, bro. So they don't understand what it was like in our neighborhood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you say the Red Pathfinder, they, don't, they wasn't outside for that. They, they keep hearing about this nigga that was in D.C. getting money. They don't know the nigga right across the street was getting all the money. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? They don't, but they don't know that because that's not what they heard in the documentary. Facts. Now look how small the world is. He said, wow, look who I been. That's when they got I been. We talking about the early 90s when I been was running around with Arnold before Arnold caught that fucking Fed case. It was a Tim and Ivan against the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you had some purple rain niggas. They was running around by grandma building. And then you had the mother niggas so that, that was about freckles and all that. The ever, man. Shout out to the lynch mob, the Puerto Rican lynch mob, man. 12th Street. Johnson was dangerous too, though. Johnson was dangerous. Everybody you go through your politics, second and a half, Jeff. But you had to been outside to know that, man. <laughs> yeah, y'all move. That shit was crazy. That was the ever B. That was the ever, man. Yep. The lynch mob. Your man, your man thought it was easy E. Your brother thought it was easy E, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what that's, that's what we was on that easy E shit. Niggas was only black, black hats, with all that, you know what I'm saying? So when the dudes mentioned this small to me, shout out to Lou Sims and them. But the niggas we grew up around, that was from Puerto Rican niggas. I mean, that's just poor but niggas from the hood. Like that, them 12th Street niggas was doing it. You know what I'm saying? It was peaceful, bro. It was it was peaceful. Niggas was on the LA shit. I'll tell you, because we always would bump heads in spots like Mr. G's. Just to say, say the least, Mr. G's are just on third ass. Niggas would bump heads right there on third ass. So everybody told you a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he still think he easy E. I'm trying to tell you, man, he was only easy E shit. That radio, E, yo, yo, son, that easy E had a major influence on niggas. I don't know how, bro. Definitely Kenny Garcia was popping, was popping. Yo, he had a major influence on niggas, easy E. Because niggas had, back then, niggas had the chemical blogs and all that, you know what I'm saying? You got easy E hats on with black t shirts. Yo, this shit was crazy. <laughs> this was black shit. Playing that easy E shit and NWA shit all day. So they had an influence on our generation. We just wasn't doing drive bys. We was doing all that other shit they was doing. Drinking 40 ounces, calling bitches, bitches, bitch. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All type of stupid shit like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but other than that shit, we was all, we was, dudes was, they just had an influence on us, bro. Word. And we talking about when his brother had the red BMW, this is the, the early 90s. <laughs> we love G Rap, bro. <laughs> he said, hell y'all did. Yo, yo, son, that influence is crazy. The influence is crazy because I think it's had the so they had them hats with the letters and all this shit. So I think it was like. Cause we had the music, the niggas started running for Mr. G's buying the San Antonio Spur hats. Remember that? The niggas are dipping, get the LA King shit. Niggas, you know what I'm saying? Niggas started dipping in, and you you go on a certain block, and niggas are playing West Coast hip hop. Too short. It's that nigga, um, like certain little West Coast shit. Too short. MC Ren, <laughs> like oh shit. MC Eight. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas was really, like, they was for, like, like that shit became something. Because that list mob shit that we knew about was some um, ice cube. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, son. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yo, um, Kenny Garcia goes, I was born in 73, um, Autumn. Um, Kenny Garcia, I'm from the Bronx, 166th Street in Tel Aviv. I grew up with pawn ticket scaling. I'll be the gambling spot on 167th and Clay Ash. Shout out to the Bronx, you heard? Right? <laughs> Club 361. Yeah, the start of the jackets was crazy. Now, G Rap had a G Rap had a major effect on us. It's just that the influence was that NWA shit. Like Rock Kim, we loved them. Like G Rap niggas loved G Rap. All that men at work, um, Road to Riches. Niggas, niggas seen niggas seen the Road to Riches and went to Mr. G's or Tom Dick and Harry and went and put now mind you, these blocks I'm telling you about. You had crews on these blocks. This just wasn't though, we just pop up. Like you had the wash mob niggas. You, you know what I'm saying? You had them niggas in wash. That was you no know, like the niggas that just be like a hundred thirsty, Devic and them niggas, Devic and Monty and all them niggas over there. You had to pass certain blocks. Lynch mob niggas are hundred twelve. So think about it. This shit is third ever. You gotta walk past niggas to get places. Hunt ten, she had to dope niggas by the you know what I'm saying? You had to go right there. She was crazy. Shout out to my man Blake, tall ass Blake. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Jefferson Park Junior High School. That park was a spot, bro. 88, 89. Niggas is getting niggas is niggas had spots right there at one in one seventeen park. It was crazy, bro. Right there by Franklin Plaza. Yeah, them blocks is lit. Hunt ten. It's crazy. On the 7th, it's crazy. Hell yeah. That's somebody that was there. It was there. The game was different. And we wasn't chasing the niggas that y'all watch these documentaries and be like, oh, no, no, no. we wasn't trying to be like these niggas. Like, that was a, niggas had their own style. We was just trying, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta keep in mind the dudes that try, a lot of your dudes look up to. <laughs> he definitely wasn't the only name. You know what I'm saying? Def- I just told you there was a nigga who lived, who was right across the street, had a liquor store. His pops owned the liquor store, right there on First Ave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right there, right there on First Ave. That, that, that's to say the least. You know what I'm saying? Debbie shot to Manhattan Ave. You heard? Exactly. Just to say the least, there were some important niggas over. We can't forget about the raw deal niggas. We can't forget about them. The East Side is just that a lot of dudes didn't leave New York. Yo, it was crazy, bro. Mind you, a lot of us met each other at the boys' club. <laughs> yeah, at the boys' club, bro. Yeah, my man Dave, one of his baby mothers. You probably know Dave because you. Steve up on 122nd Street and Lex, his cousin. He had, he had, you know what I'm saying? He got murdered on my block. He got murdered on my block, though, some, some silly shit, but Steve O, that's, that's what we was fucking with. We would go over to town and fuck with Steve O and, 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 and Lefty and all of them at the 122nd Street and Lex. They said, you know what I'm saying? They said Steve was losing his mind. But his cousins, I talk, I was talking to some niggas all the time. The twins, the Little Short twins, Richie and Mike. I used to talk to some niggas sometime, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Steve. They said Steve starts fuck with that water. You know what I'm saying? But Steve, that's my nigga. You know what I'm saying? The blowouts, 127, 127, Steve, the Lex, yep. Yeah. Right. All that Lexington Ave shit was lit, definitely. 117 shit, you don't know. <laughs> 117 was crazy. And you're talking about it when Ruben had it. Before Blue Top, all that BTM shit. We talking about a wave, like like way before that flow. Shout out to Man Skin and Johan and them niggas. They don't get the accolades. They just talk about um, Daddy and the other nigga um, in the heck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You see, doing bad, man. That be one twenty seven. See the length. You already know. Nineteen ninety. That's a fact. Nineteen ninety. Yeah, exactly. Nineteen ninety. Yeah, they say he started fucking with that water, man. They said Steve was trying to fuck with that water. Which one, the one that the one that passed away in DC, or the one that the one that passed away down south? One, he was getting a lot of money too. The one that was running around with you know that whole dad, that whole them niggas on one seventeenth was doing a lot of things, man. That little crew, 
I don't know if they was down with the down boys, but that shit used to be over there. You know what I'm saying? That down boy shit. Yeah. Because that heck was some TAF, right? PS, P, PS5 building, right? That that heck was some PSA5 building, I believe. Yep, and daddy in them, yep. What's the name cousin from over there? You know what I'm saying? Um, Malik. He from like 118th between, or 118th or 119th over there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Malik. Now, I met Malik. I know him. He's because he's fucking niggas on my block. You know, <laughs> you know, who's the fuck with that nigga? He has to, you know, you know my man Mikey, man. Big head, Rock City co defendant. You know what I'm saying? He used to fuck with Malik. You know what I'm saying? You know, to my big head Mikey from Lex. Him and Rock had a good one. Like, shout out to Rock City. You know what I'm saying? They had a great one, him and Rock. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and Jeff. I don't know. If, I don't know if he got locked up again. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know if he got bagged again. I, I know that he did like 20 years and he came home, or 15 years and came home. Rock, 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 rapping now. I think he's he on his MC shit again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Rock City on his MC Shan shit again. But Mike, but I know Mike been quiet. Knowing him, man, he probably you know Mike's the mind. Now somebody else was saying, I just remember she's she's they had a they had a trail of money holes on the west side, you know what I'm saying? Oh Malik, he might Malik might be locked up. I know he came home from that case. I know he came home from that shit. But who knows since he's been home, who knows what shit he done got got got, got caught up in, you know what I'm saying? But he came home from that case. That actually that BTM case, he actually came home. I know what seemed locked up again, twin. They said, you know, the Mike, Mike got locked up again. It's crazy. All that time, man, got caught with some guns. Stupid shit, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Malik from Wash. I don't know. I think he is. I'm from Carver. Oh, I don't know. I think he is. I hope not, but I think he is. Yeah, yeah, to my Malik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He locked Malik. Not, not Malik, but Malik, yeah. His daughter's dream doll or some shit like that, right? The dream doll pops, Malik, right? The last time I see Malik, to my little Malik, he used to be with Poodle, rest in peace. He was with Poodle. And this is nine, what is it, nine five. Poodle had to beef the nigga in my project. Smacking the nigga from 100th Street, you know where the bus depot on Alexis at? To the corner. I see the shit. Wow, Swift and PA. I think that's is that is, is that why um Sun locked up? What's the nigga name? Um he got little, little Ab. I think little Kazoo Ab. I think he's locked up in PA. I hope he came home, but little Ab is caught up. Yeah, yeah, he's still locked up. I just said Moly. Yeah, Malik, yeah, he got like 30 years of her some shit like that. His daughter getting millions though, the dream dog shit. She get she gets she gets she's getting to the bag. Now I think don't know that. That's some pops. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that, that's some parts, Malik. I think he, I think he called his case in Carver. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's his, that's his daughter, bro. Word. That's what, I see some shit that she posted. This is my pop. I said, oh shit, Malik. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a pop. Well, she posted this shit. Yo, I love my father. That's that little nigga. He's been with Poodle. Remember Poodle, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, because Malik used to be with Poodle, and I remember when I told Poodle to slap my man up, so I walked, across, I ran across the street, called myself protected my man, and took a swing and fell. Them niggas had all type of guns to my forehead, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was like, nah, that don't kill him, he don't know no better. And um, it was like, yo, man, he's about to smoke, you know, so I see Malik again, but Malik used to be with, you know, Poodle, rest in peace, was like a bully, my nigga. You don't remember Poodle from uh, from Carver? He stood in jail. Yeah, he used to be with Poodle. Yeah, yeah, Speedo was popping. Yeah, little Poodle. He had a brother named JJ. You put a cousin named JJ. Yeah, we rest in peace, Mike Swift. JJ was was his cousin from Washington. JJ Slay, where they, you know what I'm saying? JJ Lip. But Poodle always stood in jail. Yeah, they were some Washington and Carver niggas, some Carver mob niggas. Really, Poodle was. Yeah. 
that's the that's the shit that he, he got killed in, in Wash, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, sir. Tell you, man, definitely see. The world is small, party people. You see how you see how small the world is? That's why a nigga can only front for so long. So something familiar. Oh shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we was going to jail when the last of the Mohegans. You know what I'm saying? The last what you call the cloth. Fact. It's some east side shit, man. First half was different back then. Yeah, yeah, the cloth was different. The texture was different. The the, the I would say what's crazy is that do I know Poon? Oh nah. But but <laughs> yeah, they, they go to West. I don't know. The East Side was popping, but we had our spots. We had our spots. We had the Jackson Holes. We had one fish, two fish. Don't get it twisted. We had, you know what I'm saying? We had our spots. Oh, you, oh, you see scout tickets, no doubt. I, I probably heard of him before, though. You know what I'm saying? I probably seen him before. Let me Randy Love, first half. My other man was from Wash. He used to call him Randy Love Walker. Little Randy from Wash. It's crazy, Randy. Um, yo, look how small the world is, man. See how small the world is? Come out, I was in jail with that. We wasn't cutting together. We were just on our east side shit, bro. Exactly. We had our own style. Like I told you, certain blocks, you had to go past certain crews. Shout out to the high post crew and all that. The Rush Mob and, you know, Confess side up niggas or Lex. Lex was popping. Shout out to the, hunt, the crew on 104 from Lex. Carvesta, da da, don't know, 100, 100, you know what I'm saying? We, like, 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 a lot of us went to the same liquor store. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hunter, well, we, we would go to Hunter. So that's what I'm saying. Dudes was forced to bump heads. If he was on first, she went to the shit on first. Like, lose locations, shop a location. You know what I'm saying? The whole Lex was lit. Facts, facts. Yeah, I went there. My man brought me there right there. I'm 46. The, the, I'm Sprangler nigga. And he, they, they, they food is mad good in the brownstone. Them Jamaican niggas own a lot of those brownstones, bro. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Definitely shout out to my, my, my Jamaicans, man. The Sprangler niggas. My man Facts brought me over there. Yeah, AZ Facts. You know your man Facts. Sugar Hill Facts 151. You already know. Yeah, yeah, A. Um, yo, this is dope, man. Yo, you gotta hit my inbox. So you know what I'm saying? My, 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 you know what I'm saying? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, definitely hit my inbox. I got, I got the IG page, man. Um, Vicky Black Feed the Wolves. You know what I'm saying? There it is. There it is. It's a Spanish side of Jefferson on 112. Martin Chez. Frenchy Boom, Coco, Big East Side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They got on the second floor. <laughs> I bought the Jamaican food from them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which mark are you talking about? Hold on. What mark are you talking about? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What mark are you talking about, man? Come on, little man, Martin. Which mark are you talking about? Wait a minute. Hold up. And now, you know, we talking about the same Martin, because Martin used to be in Jeff. Last time I seen Martin, he was with little Ito. What's the little, um, I call him five, I call him little Ralphie. And I call him little Mono. He be rapping. He on his rapping shit. Um, definitely shout out to, um, Hunt Trust in the first half. I'm going to tell you what's crazy. I was just watching the movie Strap. Remember the corner store right there? I was just watching the movie Strap, that corner store right there, Hunt 12. And first, bro, that corner store. I was just watching that shit the other day. Oh, you talking about old Martin? Okay, copy. You know, the the, the you know what I'm saying the, the other Martin. You know what I'm saying he was he was he was running around with me. In nine five. Oh, he locked up. I know that name sound familiar. I know I know who you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jefferson Park was across the street. Jefferson Pool and all that. Well, I, I remember I used to go to because my man, you, 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 my man Hector Mendez, he used to live in Jeff before he went upstate, and he used to bring me around Jefferson before Rock Court got that great run when it was like first half, whatever, whatever the politics was. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man Heck, man and Jeff. Said Johnny Fresh. Um, said who's this? Johnny Fresh. Oh, oh, Eastside Fresh. That's you. Ah. Uh, <laughs> that's what he said. He said, yes, sir, that's him. See? The connection is the connection. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, this is crazy. Look how small the world is. You see how small the world is? The world is small, man. The world is small, man. My man should be over there, though. Christian, skinny Christian. He be trying to promote parties, do all the, the golf club shit and all that shit. My man Christian, he from 2nd Ave. He's from 2nd and 115. That's my man. Yeah, that's my man. I knew Chris, because me and Chris went to, when I first moved from Queens to Manhattan, we went to PS155 together. <laughs> yeah, because it's my man Christian. It's my man Chris. I, <laughs> me and Chris, because we went to school together. I went to PS155 on 117 between first and second. That's the first block I moved to. And then I moved to, to, to Lex. But before I got to Lex, my building got into a fire. I used to live on 114th Street. From 117th, I moved to 114th on 1st. Between 15th and 4th. Of course, the street from Jefferson. You know what I'm talking about. The festivals and all this shit. Then I had a fire. And after I got to the west side, there was this hotel on 100th Street. And like Broadway. And then from now hotel, that's how I got to Lexington. Hell yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> Definitely was me and my man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how I got to see man shit. Being outside. Grandma lives in town. My cousins always lived in Washington. You know what I'm saying? Um you know, my mom's are still young, bro. So when your mom is young, you know what I'm saying? You still living her life. You know, 130th, 8K projects, all that shit over there. You know what I'm saying? Mama love us to live her best life. Now small to work That's my man Christian. He be he be um my man brother owned that sneaker store. Nelson, he owned exclusive revivals. That's my man Razo's little brother. Oh, and Nelson was this tall. My man Razo. That's my man too. His brother owned that exclusive revival. That's all you sneakerheads. You ever in Manhattan? I don't know, I think 111 Street. Now I'm in St. Louis right now. I'm I, I moved to St. Louis. Yeah, I'm in St. Louis right now. But my IG is Zeke Black Feed the Wolves. So, you know what I'm saying? If you got an IG, hit me up in the inbox. You know what I'm saying? Are oh, you better on her knife? <laughs> her knife? She, yeah, her knife was crazy too. My man, you know what's about? Yeah, yeah. Oh, now, nah, now, nah, be on. Um, shout out to Blake. My man Blake be over there somewhere. But Blake used to be right there on, on right by that store. Yeah, it's a hot knife, right? Right by that store. That's my man, TFT crew. <laughs> right, right, right by that store. But 109th Street was another money block. You know what I'm saying? All that shit, 109th, 108th, 107th, all that shit, all that was crazy. Well, it's a different time, man. Look how small the world is. Yeah, exclusive arrivals, man. 
Oh yeah, so, to my knowledge, it's still there. Yeah, to my knowledge. Yeah. Now I thought I thought oh that well, I thought I thought it was a hundred tenth. Oh, that's a hundred ninth. I don't know why I would say a hundred tenth. That's a hundred ninth, right? Right there. What is it? Right, right there. That's my that's my man Nelson. Me and me and his older brother, me and his brother, we grew up together. I moved out of town, Rosso. Me and Roz. Yeah, you're still there, my man, my man Nelson. We had that for a while too, man. For all you sneakerheads, a hundred nine. I don't know why I say a hundred ten, but a hundred nine. It's right across the street from that school, right? From um, one seventeen, I believe. I, I might be something different now, but I think it was one seventeen. My guy, look how small the world is, man. <laughs> look how small the world is, funny people. That's why. Now look, it was not. It wasn't a crazy. We was in a jail cell. We had to cut five niggas. And we had to snatch. We was, yeah, we just. It was one thing about East Harlem niggas, man. Is that we stick together. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about. I got to the zip code. We all. Does everybody somewhere know somebody? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Everybody. Everybody. Don't want to stick together. You're from Ricardo's, yeah? Back in the days, there was a barbershop over there, I believe. I think somebody got shot in the head and they went up shutting that shit down. Back in the days, though, I, I think in the 90s or something like that, somebody, I think, I think there was a barbershop over there. And somebody got hit in the head and that just shut that shit down. I remember that shit was popping off, you know what I'm saying? But I think what calls is across the street. Cause there's like a Chinese Muslim spot over there. I think, I think, I think there's a Chinese restaurant that don't sell pork over there too. Look how small the world is, man. Look how small the world is. Yeah, cause remember, you know what I'm saying? Look how small the world is. See, one thing about our side of town is, so we stick together. There's no miraculous jail story. Yo, somebody had to hop over the... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because remember that, that whole side, that, that whole, that whole Jeff, Jeff was popping. Wow, Jeff shot the bullets, got in the building. Yo, they lined Vaughn, Drew, and Chris up at the rooftop. That that was chick behind it. Oh. That is like the newspaper article about the experience. The thumbnail is just me showing love to LA. You know what I'm saying? My thumbnails ain't got nothing to do with the content. You know what I'm saying? Just, no, I never show love to LA. So my cousin, again, my cousin was like, Zeke, why don't you show love to LA? I don't know much about LA. So I just put his picture in a good video. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, you know what I'm saying? But definitely, definitely. I'm happy for the history lesson. Shout out to LA and WAP. You know what I'm saying? Just showing love, man. You just show love, man. Sometimes you just show love on a thumbnail. Just show love. If you know, you know. I ain't watched the documentary. I read that shit in the New York Times. That situation. That's why I had to give you all the whole what was going on that time. And then I had to read that, but what's going on that time. Definitely shout out to Bullets Gotti in the goddamn building. Shout out to Gotti. Gotti's in the building. Gotti gang, you heard? But yo, you know what I'm saying? What's crazy, man? There was a club. I don't know if you remember this. 1989, the rich was popping. And they had this holiday joint. And they had this shit with Queen Latifah and all of them. It's crazy. 
You know what I'm saying? That shit was crazy. That shit was that that that, that shit was ill, man. That, that that was a dope time, man. Um. Now you see how you hear East Side niggas. Shout out to the West Side though. Shout out to the West. We love y'all. You know what I'm saying? But the East Side was popping too. You know what I'm saying? And You know what I'm saying? And you remember, you remember the Rich joint? I remember, I think it was one year, I think it was 89. Yeah, it was 89 Easter, and mad dudes went to the Ritz. Because my man Jose was related to some Brian Ad boys. And if dudes only people don't even know the history, well, some of the Brian Ad boys was cool with Tone Lopez. That was really in my neighborhood and Superman. And all of them, and they all went to the Ritz. I was supposed to go with them, but I wound up going to Albany with my cousin. Because <laughs> my because my generation was going to go with them. Like, all my mans went, like, you know, Dave and the rest of them. They all went to the Ritz, too, that night. And I believe Chicky was with them. Hell, yeah. Because the, <laughs> the, the cotton club was crazy. That was a spot too. That was a, that, that, that was a hot spot. Hell yeah. That's when tell you, New York was a different time, man. It was just, it was just different. But TNT started really casing niggas up. Shit got real with them TNT buses. I'm on the they caught me in wash. Yo, when TNT catch you, they don't they don't they don't just bring you to the police station. You actually drive a wire around with them and watch them niggas bag niggas. Like, oh shit. Yes, that's that RP Tone Lopez. That hill hole shit. 100 shit. Facts. His, 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 his team was eating crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me, um, let me, let me. Let me take you back. Let me take you back. Shout out to my man. My man. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? What's your man? What's your man? What's your man? What's, your man? What's popping? Yo, Sway, what's popping? What's popping? J.E. Moneyback is in the building. What's your man? Um, I'm going to bring you back. Shout out to my man Frank White from Washington. You know what I'm saying? What's popping? Yo, shout out to Frank White from, from Wash. Now, mind you. Now, look. Now, look. Drew was popping. Was popping. Was popping. Was I'm gonna tell you what's crazy, right? Is that shout out to my man Yambo out there. <laughs> Wagon word. That's my man Dave with the white hat. The guy with the white hat, that's Dave. The nigga to my block. I had to take you back. I had to take you back. You know what I'm saying? I rolled in that van six hours a few times. You heard? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bring you back to the block. With the white hat, that's my man Dave. Um, that's not, this, this, this is Nelson's brother, Razo. That's Raz. Oh, to my Kenny Black? To my, um, I think Tones in South Carolina and to my Kenny Black. Kenny Black is in the feds doing like 20. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's about, he's about. He said Kevin. I know Tone. See, I know, I know Kenny Black too. You know what I'm saying? Like you, they always to be in Wall Street. Like you. Yeah, Kenny. Yeah, Kenny Black. He caught a fed charge in Binghamton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He caught a fair. He, he definitely caught a fair charge to pay. Um. Yeah, he got like twenty years, man. Fuck with that. He got, he, but, but look what he's in jail for: selling crystal meth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fucking around with that crystal meth shit. He got that nigga like twenty joints. Remember, Kenny Black. Was yeah, yo, Tom Black, my joy. I interviewed him. 
Tom Black chilling. He went somewhere now. I think he done some somewhere. But I didn't know Tom Black got caught with that little Kim shit. Whoa, Tom Black chilling. Yeah, he chilling. He got caught with that little Kim shit. I guess he had the car service and they put his name in the mix. And Tom Black did like a dime for that shit. You know what I'm saying? I interviewed Tom Black. You know what I'm saying? I interviewed him. It's on there, Tom Black. What? Um. That's my guy. Tom Black's the OG, man. This is this this, this is your man Sugar Hill Tom. I'm a Sugar Hill Tom. That's that's niggas on my block. My man JG from Porsche. My and Keith. Shout out to Keith, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, you the big with Tom Black. You good people, man. So those are the OGs. Him, Chase, Pudge. You know what I'm saying? But see these dudes are no fire. I don't know. I don't know if you remember Fire. He used to be in Washington with them too. Fire got like 25 years in the track. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh. Come on a second. It's my man. Let me see. Let me see. This is Dave right here. Man, Dave. That's Dave right there. Uh, your man, Tom Black. Tom Black chilling, man. He be, he be on IG a lot. You know what I'm saying? You know, Tom Black is a smart guy, man. A lot of dudes don't even know that Smokey, Charles, Charles used to be with them. You know what I'm saying? He used to be out there with them. You know what I'm saying? In Washington. When I say Washington, Washington Projects in East Harlem, not the one in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? They was dangerous. 169 from Washington, the Washington Projects over there. But I, I live in George Washington Projects as well. You know what I'm saying? In East Harlem. Good, I'm 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 yeah, 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 we in the building, man. Definitely shout out to Spanish Harlem, you heard? That's funny. Look, look how small the world is. We was locked up 1991, they got in the court pens. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? We something. I just do the best I can under these conditions. I just have to be outside. And, 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 and I'm not a superhero, so I'm not going to be known for no stupid superhero shit. We just east side niggas that stick together. We in the court pens. Hold on, fly with a play. Nah, son, we together. Nah, son, I know his brother. We family. That's how I go on the east side. Yo, you fan boy? Who, what? All right, you bet. All right, we back to back. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's just how it was, bro. You know what I'm saying? I ain't seen that man in over 20 something years. So I'm conversating. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was son. In the court pants. He used to see him in the little library and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? But his brother was going through, uh, he had a motorcycle, a bad motorcycle accident. So his brother was going through, so, 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 you know what I'm saying? Just trying to, you know, recoup, man. Now these are the dudes you see running around with the cars. The niggas, these are the dudes that inspired the, the men that y'all all look up to. These are the niggas that was running around with the cars and the vans and the switching up with the bikes and all that shit. These are the niggas that was doing that. If, 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 if you want to be truthful, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But tell me, that's why that's that's why it's like, you know, you know. You don't really hear from East Side Cats, you know what I'm saying? Word. Um, your man, it's my man, I don't know if you can see, this is Rock, this is Rock City. My man Mike, <laughs> shout out to Mike, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> my man Rock. Um, you know, sports kept us all together. So a lot of us played sports together. You had like my block, which is like that my block, some of my block was Sugar Hill. You had the dead end kids, you had the Carver Mall. These are football teams, but dudes from the hood. 
and they would play football in these football leagues. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know if the lynch mob had a football team, but I'm pretty sure some of their players played on, on the, in some of these teams around the way, bro. Yeah, your man, um, Odie. That's, that's he in the D. Your man, Odie. Free Odie. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's man, Aunt White. Aunt White got a good one. I sent him the twins, man. Free, free the twins, man. But rest in peace, Aunt White, man. Aunt White had a good one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. He had a decent run. White. My man, Hakeem. Hakeem on fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's so, it's, 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 it's this East Side shit. You know what I'm saying? But because of schools and where you grew up at on the East Side, it was like a lot of us went to the boys club. Or a lot of us played baseball, and that's how a lot of dudes was meeting up. That's how a lot of dudes got cool with each other. Before they hugged the block, dudes was riding bikes together. You know what I'm saying? Like, things happen to dudes, don't get it twisted. But it wasn't like I told you, it was nothing like a nigga woke up and said, we're going to war with the niggas tomorrow on that side. Things was happening, there was some type of wars here and there, you know what I'm saying? I remember when Kenny Black was like the only black, I remember when Kenny Black was like the only black guy part of the Hill Hole crew. You know what I'm saying? I remember when Kenny Black was like the only black person part of his Puerto Rican crew. You know what I'm saying? As, as in a high position. Boy, Kenny Black, when he, went, he went to, um, what the fuck, where he went to Kenny Black? Kenny goes to Binghamton and catch like a, 20 years selling crystal meth, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy, man. Now look how wild that is. You know? I remember when first half had, had Club 105 with the freaky dickies and all that. Not just them, but the Club 105, you know what I'm saying? I remember that spot was, was rocking. That's why a person can only perpetrate the force so long in the streets before somebody go, yo, I think I know you from somewhere. See, it's easy to have a jail reputation because it's easy to go, yo, I did this, then I went to the box. I did that, I went to the box. Oh, I was in that spot. But in the streets, you can talk all that animal shit all you want. There's somebody that's gonna go, yo, you look familiar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And when you get to that familiar stage, yeah, I know him, but he ain't like that. You see what I'm saying? Nah, so they can fool you. A nigga, a, a nigga just know from the conversation you having who you are. The nigga, there's one thing about East Side niggas, but never gonna throw the obvious names at you. Oh, you know Randy Love? Yo, you know General Tony? Yo, you know Bodyguard? You know Wu Tang? You don't say the obvious names. Because I know, yo, yo, I know, son. Because these niggas that's outside of the day. You gotta throw on, you was outside 1990, you should know who this nigga is. Who was he fucking with? You know what I'm saying? Exactly, bro. Exactly. Niggas left on the obvious names because, you know what I'm saying? Because it's all about the fact. Yo, bro, you know such and such, bro. You know what I'm saying? Okay, because you keep talking about the niggas he fuck with, you should know the boss. <laughs> you said that once? If you're saying you know such and such who's around these niggas, then you should know. Look how me and him is conversating and I haven't even said his name yet. <laughs> I remember the situation. We was in the court picture niggas like Mojo and all of them. That's when, that, you know what I'm saying? We talking about when these niggas was going to, when, when, they was, when John Rambo was running around like his island and all that crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? That's the we talking about. That's why, you know, one thing, one, one thing about the righteous, you know what I'm saying? Um, you made a mad jack you know, when he was younger. <laughs> Frank Nitty and all of them. You know what I'm saying? I think a mad jack. But um Yes, yeah, and that's that's just so we're giving you we gave you I gave you 88 to 90. You know what I'm saying? I only put LA on a thumbnail again to show him love with a good video that doesn't deal with snitching. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know hear I me? Mean? That doesn't deal with nobody telling on nobody, that doesn't deal with none of that stupid shit. It's a good video 
People could look at him and go, damn, L.A., because on the west side, he was honorable, and he got caught up in something, in whatever happens in the street, but we don't talk about the, the good ones. We'd rather talk about the ones that went all the way bad. We glorify them in all the wrong places. You know what I'm saying? So, definitely, man. My, 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 let me show you my thing. Um, I'll put it in here, man. My IG is, I'm going to put it in here. My IG is Zeke Black. Yes, that's why I just show love to an actual honorable video. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about rats and rodents. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? My IG is Zeke Black Feed the Wolves. Yeah. And that's what people feed off of. The obvious shit. Yo, ba 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 ba. You know what I'm saying? And if anybody else want to subscribe, you know what I'm saying? Black Feed the Wolves. You know what I'm saying? This is how you, you, you know you start hitting boom, 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 boom. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see how he said Bob Lemon, right? He didn't say the Zab run. He said the Bob Lemon run. At the Bob Lemon, you know, Purple City. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 117 Street, way before BTM, Ruben. You know what I'm saying? The Reynolds, the Camrons, names one of our Smurf and all. Ah, 40 King High School 45 was the dangerous place. That's the closest you usually get to the four building. <laughs> 45. Lex was different back then. 1990 was crazy over there. All that shit going towards AK projects and all that shit. That's my man Big Vito. All that shit going towards 130 with Jackie Robinson and all that shit was crazy. Come on, man. They had a spot called Seafo Haven. But you go on Madison going towards Stinking Lincoln, them side blocks was million dollar blocks. Going towards Stinking Lincoln. See? Yeah? Yeah? Them niggas started killing them. That block, as long as I was a kid, it was always dope fiends over there, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's just always mad dope fiends over there. To me. Now, my mind you, when we was outside, they don't know about Italian Vinny and Redhead Joey and, and all them niggas and Jimmy Cole. Where the fuck? The Italian, the, the, the Italians, they used to be right there on first half. They don't know that we grew up with, them, with these niggas around our waist, son. Right? Purple City was crazy. You know what's funny? Is. Ah, shit. KC was a class act. I got to give KC his props. The nigga had a van. They had the purple shit and all this crazy shit. There was a club on the Upper East Side by. Um, what's the name of that shit, man? What's the name of that? What's that? Ah. Those shits look like them shits RPT. They look like RPT, but they're on, they're on Second Avenue. Rupert Towers, a club called, I think it was uh, Quasimodo's or some shit like that. These niggas had come through with the vans and all that. <laughs> Purple City. We in a club party with these niggas. Purple City in the building. He bringing all them niggas from, his, from, up, from over there by Wagner and all that shit. And Taino up there. There was side blocks. Quasimodo. I believe it was Quasimodo. Tess moves to be in there DJing and all that. You know what I'm saying? Now, b and is just closer to them. That shit downtown by like 92nd Street or 93rd Street. Not 93rd, that's too far, like by like 94th Street. Right by Rubin Towers, that Quasimodo shit. That right doing second half. The B&B shit was official. That was a karate spot, Bruce Lee You know what I'm saying? Then they had the weight shit going on there, then they had to, they had to do the parties over there. Hunt 10th Street parties. Tell me, I was the ever, man. So, East Side niggas always had to bump heads with each other. <laughs> because we all went to the same spots. A lot of us went to the same spots. We did a lot of things together. I got funny, it kept the violence down. It kept a lot of the violence down, man. It kept a lot of the, because we all grew up together. So, shit was happening. Don't get it twisted. Shit was happening. 
But it wasn't to the point where niggas, like, you know what I'm saying? We would go to a spot and be chilling. Dudes was buying weed from the same spots. Bumping heads. Going to the same liquor stores. Shout out to Nelson, them niggas from a, I mean, the other Ivan. I was up north with him. Shout out to Ivan, man. I'm the second half. I'm fourth in them, you know what I'm saying? No, no, I'm fourth. What's that, hun? Was that a hunt fourth? I think hunt fourth. I think it was a hunt fourth or hunt second. Some shit over there. By second down that corner. Devin shot some of my man Ivy, man. We all grew up together. We all, we all, a lot of us grew up together, man. Tom, Dick, and Harry's right there, right by. I remember when Tom, Dick, and Harry's, and I think it was Carvel was right there. Right, right next to the ice cream spot. The pizza shop was popping right there. Tom, Dick, and Harry's, right there on 3rd Ave. Told you my block, we had a 103rd Street, you know, 103rd and 3rd Ave. <laughs> that shit on the corner. Park, you know what I'm saying? Like, all this shit was in our hood. There's a high school over there, Park East. I think it was Park East and some shit like that. That shit was only about like 105th. Wow. This is a history lesson, baby. Let's take it uptown. Take it uptown, man. Um, definitely hit me in the, the definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, Tom, Dick, and Harry's still there, man. Your yeah, man, what's his name? The big guy, man. The big guy worked there. You know what I'm saying? The OG, he be with Ted Smooth a lot, man. Shout out to him, man. Gito. Shout out to Gito. OG Gito. Shout out to that whole Rush Mob, that whole high post graffiti crew by three and all. My man, Joe, Probably no Joe from Metro North. The Ava East and the whole TDO crew. You know what I'm saying? Well, just took it back to the NWA shit with the the niggas had the blowouts with the with the, with the, with the glasses with the rhinestones in them shit. Niggas thought they was fucking R and B artists. With the, with the with that black shit, niggas was only NWA shit, drinking them forty ounces, playing all that West Coast shit. Niggas was playing Easy E's first album, son, on the blocks. Easy E first shit. Not first with the shit that was popping, all that Robin Banks and all this crazy shit. This is this shit. That, 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 he had a big influence in, in that New York, you know what I'm saying? Then Spice One and the rest of them. Niggas started snatching all that other shit up. Yo, yo, that, they was on that West Coast vibe, bro. I told you, MC8. Niggas see Man's Society, and everybody want to be old dog. Only thing people seen was the, the first part of the movie was all anything everybody talked about. Fuck all the other shit. Yo, son, shot son, face. You know what I'm saying? That shit hit, yo. That shit, that, that niggas for life shit. Niggas is playing that shit. Real niggas beating niggas up. Real, but real nigga. Ding, 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 ding. That's, a, that's when shit was getting a little violent. Definitely, definitely shout out to Marcy Project. Shout out to Brooklyn, man. Yo, we was stomping niggas' heads in. Damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the mother. So you, niggas see Men's Society? It was like, yo, old dog. <laughs> that movie had nothing, there was nothing inspiration about that movie at all. You know what I'm saying? Now, when I was younger, we got a movie theater in, the, in East Harlem called The Cosmos, 116. My 16th Street was lit. Now, we had all the clothes stores. I think they still there, but it's not like how it was when we was younger. That shit from Lex to Park, it was mad clothes stores, bro. Devin, she called Augusta HS was pop, it was popping. It was mad clothes stores. So dudes would be going to the clothes, like, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like you went to back to school shopping, go to her 16th shoot, right there on 16th. That that Pushy Frito spot is still there. Bro, when that pushy shop on the corner, it's still there. The Cosmos is right there. That's where I first seen B Street at the Cosmos. You had every gang member right back there at the gangs, niggas. Yeah. You had rats flying on the floor. Shit was crazy. Niggas smoking dirty weed. <laughs> the sets with the seeds and all type of shit. Shit was crazy. Yeah, that Coochie Frito still there, bro. Right there. You know what I'm saying? That McDonald's been there forever. That shit right there on one, what's that, 117th? That shit been there forever. As long as I know that shit been there. That McDonald's. 
Even at even that part of Third Ave, you have mad stores over there, furniture store, clothes stores from from one sixteenth to one two five. Hell yeah, hell yeah, at the Cosmos. I see mad movies there, man. You know what I'm saying? It was like, it was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's part of when you grow up in East Harlem. That, that's when a lot of my kept out was open, open before they shut it down and they be open that shit. You talk about back in the days when you had whole pieces of pork sitting. You know what I'm saying? When a lot of my kept out, that lot of my kept that shit was like, it was like a market. That shit was a market, bro. Right there, on 116th, like 116th to like 112th. You could actually go in that shit. That shit, bullshit play. You know what I'm saying? Niggas. They had the porks, all type of shit. They had the meat market in there and all that. But you have to been outside to know what we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Had to been out. I told you what it brought a lot of us together was the Boys Club. The Boys Club of America brought us all together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was crazy. Facts, facts, facts. You know what I'm saying? It's just, like I told you, New York City had its style. Like I told you, Brooklyn cats, you, when you see someone with all polo on, we just, we, all, we just assume they Brooklyn cats because that's the effect that the low lives had on the culture. Even dudes that wasn't low lives is buying, I'm not low life, but I'm gonna buy polo and I buy it in the recognition to the low lives. Like, nah, that was, it became like a part of a culture. Like, somebody, someone get fresh with some polo shit, they're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna get like, like low life niggas. So you see them niggas in school with the ski jackets and all that crazy shit. So that was the spot. They would, I ain't gonna front, polo need to pay. That's the reason why I think to this day why polo's still relevant. They had a major effect. And, and on that culture, bro, you know what I mean? On, on that on that low shit, because we, we we was killing the naughty spots and all that. Not boosted, but like, you know, niggas go to the naughty spots and all that. There was no Benetton uptown. You had to go downtown to get some Benetton or Bloomingdale's and the rest of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas was coming from Brooklyn downtown, snatch going crazy. But um Woody Lowe's in the building, man. Them shot the Woody Lowe, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, with the stinky floor. The toilet stinky floor. You hear the rats go by. <laughs> the dirty ass Cosmo movie theater, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, son. I got and that's and that's 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 one thing that had an effect on the culture. Tell you when the nigga said, don't fuck when the nigga like when they, when some dudes bought polo, yo, I'm doing like them pumpkin niggas, so I'm gonna get some polo mocks, specs, some polo jeans, a polo button up. And nigga, and the nigga to get baggy. To be like a Brooklyn nigga. Like, yo, son. They, 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 you know what I'm saying? That's some shit that, I'm telling you, but what's it for them? I know Polo's, to the rich people, and other shit. Now nah, they kept that shit relevant, bro. Because all that other shit is still relevant, but it, but it died. Like, nobody's looking for Eddie Bauer. You know what I'm saying? You hear me? <laughs> nobody's looking for, even though people are buying it, nobody's looking for Tommy Hilfiger, but people are buying it. But that low shit, now, nah, nah, that low shit still got like a status. So definitely shout out to the low lives for, for, for that. Woody Lowe's in the building, man. Definitely shout out to the low lives. Shout out to my man Saladin, you know? Yeah, 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 g Matt, g Matt, you already know, you had to, you had to, you had to know this spot. The gap, the gap sweats, remember, like, remember the green gap sweats with the, Come on, bro. You got the gap on 86. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the naughty spot, as I said. Yeah, they, had, they had another spot on the west side. Seven shots to the red top crew, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right there on the Columbus, yep, the, 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 the Nordica store. It was a seasonal thing, like in the springtime, they started getting their naughty sweats, their naughty jackets. The gap had the, the, the gap sweatpants. I would love to find those gap sweatpants, bro. You know what I'm saying? It was a seasonal thing, bro. And niggas get fresh with the, with the classics or some uptowns, some white on white uptowns or some good. Come on, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There was a spot on the west side some fuck with. This was called Nick's. You had these big ass burgers, bro. You go to Broadway. I think it was on Broadway. Some big ass burgers. The burgers was this big, bro. It was like Jackson Hole. Some big ass burgers. You should go to Nick's, bro, on the west side. Shoot up over there. You know what I'm saying? But you had to been outside. See the conversation that we're all having? They had to been outside to experience this shit. You know what I'm saying? Dudes will leave the east side just to go to the Knicks. 
you always go to the next get some burgers. It wasn't no five star restaurant. You just go there and get the big ass burgers, bro. Right there on the west side. Ronald Slew, Slew, Slew. Right there on the west side, man. Damn, it brought me back. Yeah, Wings on 86. And we had that show on 86 Street. There was also another Wings by West 4th. Downtown. They had the Jabot store by West 4th, too. Uh, There's a store that's just sold nothing but Jabot's. That's when Jabot's was cost like $100. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's when Jabot's was a dipping. It was a different temperature before the hood niggas caught it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah? 95th Street, there was one on that 86th Street. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny because all that part of the West Side was where the money was at. All that by West End and all that other shit was where the money was at. We had one on 86th Street. I remember the one on West 4th. Yeah, you're right, 96. You know what I'm saying? Because the reason why I know about the one on West 4th, because we used to go downtown in that West 4th new area back in the days. Because niggas tried to be exclusive with these shopping. So niggas would go downtown, right? like by Broadway. Like niggas would go, dudes would go to Broadway, like by Broadway and all that shit. Like 8th Street and all that shit. You had mad clothes stores on that block. At the corner, there was a, um, I think it was there after, but BBQs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right there, BBQs. I tell you, man, New York was a place to be. What makes, what, makes, what makes that part of downtown dope is that um, that's where NYU was at. So that should be mad packed downtown. I tell you, niggas have to be exclusive. Niggas, dudes just went around trying to be exclusive with their fashions, man. You know what I'm saying? So definitely, this is dope, this is dope, this is dope. Yeah, G-Man. This is dope, this is dope, this is dope. I like, I like, I, I, this is, these are the shows that I like where, where we're actually talking about an era for the people that's not from our great city, a, a time and a clock, and we're not glorifying the ones that told. We're not even disrespecting the ones that told. They just talking about the time in our life that affected us when we was young. You know what I'm saying? 135th, you know what I'm saying? Fun. It was crazy. It was mad fun. You know what I'm saying? It was just mad fun. Everybody just, and like I said, everybody was going to the same spot. I'm telling you, there was a time, there was a, you don't really believe this shit. There was a drought on baking soda, my nigga. Niggas had to go find that shit. There were certain corner stores that didn't have it. That's how much money was in the streets. So when you bought baking soda, you tried to buy like a box of that shit. That's how, that's how serious the game was. The game was that serious, bro. Now there was a Knicks that was like on 80 something street. There, there was one that was, that, that was like further down, but like, 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 by, like, like by the 90s on Broadway. There was one that, that was downtown. I don't know about the one that was uptown, but I know the one that was downtown. Fucking, they had these big ass burgers, bro. That shit was popping. But um, yeah, it was on yeah yeah. It was, it was on Broadway. It was a little, little like, like, like a little spot. Yeah, son. That's who won in the drug trade. The only ones. They had, they had the main ingredient that you needed to put in that shit. They didn't catch a fed charge. They made billions off that shit, bro, in, a, in, in five summers. Tell you, dude, I'm buying this one thing of bacon soda. Let me get 10 boxes of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because dudes was running out. That's how much money was on the street. That's how much money was on the street. That and coffee pots. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying? There's certain things that you need. You know what I'm saying? They didn't get indicted. They didn't get accused of no crimes. Nobody sued them for the epidemic. They got away scot free, arm and hammer. Arm and hammer baking soda. From 80, at least from 86, or at least from 83. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? From 83 to at least throughout the height of the game, at least to 9 5. All my hammer took at least a trillion dollars. Because once you, which is because once they 
because once they took it out of the um the ether, the game changed. Jeffy shot the KB Kong, bro. Damn yeah, them niggas cried, bro. The eight you did nine one, it took a trillion dollars. Cause you couldn't. Cause now fuck Ether. Ether took a lot. That, that's why they started putting Ether back in the cars. Oh shit. <laughs> I'm saying they put that back in the cars. Cause that armor had them. Because everybody was hustling. So even if uh, somebody uh, you, 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 you use was a small fly. Somebody was buying 10 grand. She still need the baking soda. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was crazy. It was crazy. Bruh. So you went and you went out of baking soda, you let me tell you something. You niggas, you niggas keep talking about not having guns in the crib. You had niggas that triple beans. <laughs> A box of baking soda, a box of bottles and razors. God forbid police kick the door in. You can't throw all that shit out the window. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. You can't throw all that shit out the window. You go to jail for something. So this is why, again, paying the police off kept you out the way. But you didn't bring drama to your block. You was that fucking smart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So by being smart, shooting at niggas, killing niggas, stabbing niggas was not good for your business. Where now in this new culture, this is what they do. They think that's what makes them real is by making their own block high. You don't want the person that's on the third floor. Somebody's always calling the police, right? But the lady who call the police, you know who the cop callers are because they go to your mother and they tell your mother about what you do all day. So what you do is you sit there and call the police, you be so nice to her. You be so nice to the lady. To the point where she begin to put, put you on about the police. Yo, there be a couple of cops. I was coming from the corner store. I seen two cops around the corner. Be careful. Because you're being nice to her. You're holding the door. Get the bags. She may have been coming to you for twos and fuels, yo. I'm, uh, I'm short $20 to go get something from the grocery store. Here, take it on 100 Y'all don't know how to do that. Y'all think being disrespectful is real. Fuck that bitch. She ain't my mother. She ain't crackhead and all this other dumb shit. Like, yo, son. Because these niggas that's telling you this are, are jail-based. A lot of these dudes telling you, oh, I don't know being real. This other dirt. Nah, son. How, 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 how are you not going to be in tune with your own block? That shit ain't cool. I don't hang out with niggas that beat old ladies up. Y'all think that's fashionable. <laughs> Yo, that's a real little, little nigga crazy. There was no crazy little niggas, bro. The crazy Willies couldn't hang on the block. That, that, that wasn't happening. The, not saying jail niggas, yo, he was talking shit. Yo, he throwing a shot at his jail niggas. I'm not throwing shots. I'm just saying a lot of you dudes throw messages out there that don't make sense. Little nigga, that doesn't make sense. How y'all beating old ladies up and thinking that shit is cool, bro? Son, it's crazy. The crazy willies didn't hang on the block. Because we handled the crazy willies. Yo, bro, get out of here, bro. Because most of our mothers lived on the block, bro. A lot of our grandmothers lived on the block. The fiends got respect. This cop will go get the fuck out of here. Yeah. We have to tame them. Those niggas have to tame. Hold on, you wasn't like that before. You went, nigga. Let's remind you, I'm going to fuck how many books you read, how many times you made Salad up north, that shit don't count here, bro. And that's just different what it was. And if you don't like it, we're just gonna remove you. Cop and go, respect. Yo, son, don't slap him. Like, why would you beat somebody if this purchasing something? But that's real in this day and age. Yo, I just got over one son. I finessed him. What happened? Yo, he bought 10 dimes and we killed him. We seen what happened with those crews that was doing that. Look at the wild cowboys. Just to say the least. They had some people that 
They were setting up their own customers. Hell, go, yo, they gonna come buy some bottles. Y'all rob them niggas on the corner. You see where most of them niggas is sitting at? In the penitentiary, what you in jail for? I was robbing the customers. Like, I, I, we caught two bodies. That shit wasn't making no sense. That's when the game got distorted. Oh, me too. We had the original crack wall. That I should do though, because I didn't want to go to jail. I would have the crack walls. I would pay one customer to people on another one. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, he keep playing with me? Fair change no robbery. If I kick you in the head eight times, you're going to say I robbed you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get your man. Yo, son, come here. I got four bottles here. Let's get a little physical with it. Just a little. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Go. It wasn't cool. I felt bad, but I, like I, you gotta get slapped. You did some funny shit. You gave me a fake twenty dollar bill, and I feel I'm upset. I'm upset. I took so many shorts, and you done did this to me. So now I'm gonna pay five dollars for this ass whooping. You took care of your hood, man. It's disgusting now. Y'all getting more money now. Y'all don't have no respect. You can't. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. Y'all respect all the wrong things in life. Let's talk about that. Y'all respect all the wrong things in life. How you how you say you a real nigga and your mother scared to go in and outside the, her building, bro? But you're a real one. Y'all gotta revisit what y'all think is real or what's fake. You're a real nigga. But your mom's is a hostage on the block you grew up in where you, where you actually made your name at. But you're real, you're solid. That's not solid. A nigga supposed to know better. Oh, that's some mom's, bro. You hear me? Now, that's some mom's shit. That's, that's a plan, bro. Now, now, hold the door, bro. Y'all got, got, got edgy, man. Y'all got edgy. No disrespect. Y'all got, you got, you have to get it back. Get, get that little respect back. Respect something. You ain't got to like everything, but respect something. And they're getting violated. I mean, that's not cool, man. That's not cool, man. So you can't be a legend if your mother can't go to the store and feel safe. There's nothing legendary about you. That mean niggas, that, that, that mean niggas don't respect you. Never respected you. If your moms are scared to go to the corner store because some little niggas in front of the building do what the fuck they want to do. Son just came home. One of them niggas just came home. Son just came home to war Tower shit. He just came home a couple of months ago. That's my man. You know, you know, my, um, I... You know Rome, right? Dancing Rome with the rap group Ziggy. Rome, Rome, Rome. Yeah, Reynolds, he just came home, bro. And he came home like a couple of months ago. My man Ty said that. Rome did, he did like 30 years for that shit. That shit on Ward's Island. Yeah, he just came home. That's my man Rome, Rome cousin. And, but I, I, I don't know if that's Bert's cousin. You know, the one that's in the uh, Freaky Ziki's paperwork, whatever that paperwork, but I guess Freaky Ziki brought his name up on trial. You know, Tall Bird from Wash. That's my man Bird. Yeah, they said Reynolds just came home. That's because, yeah, they said Reynolds just came home. Yeah. Wow, that's my man Rome, cousin. Remember Rome, he danced with the Germans? <laughs> he remember, he, 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 he danced with that rap group Ziggy. You know what I'm saying? Rome get busy. Romy Rome get busy. White, my wife met Rome at a test smooth party in my mom's park. They call it Marcus Garvey Park now, but I still call it my mom's park. Yeah, my man Ziggy, my man, my man Romy Rome. That's that's his family, you know what I'm saying? That shit was crazy, but that shit happened in Ward's Alley. He had like five code defendants. Which gold finger from, from Wagner? That's his, that, that, that was his cousin? Goldfinger from Wagner?
Hell yeah. That's my man going for the little curtain. He's been doing this for me. <laughs> my new guy in these curtains. <laughs> That's my nigga Kurt. Facts, he definitely did. My man Kurt. That's my man Kurt. He said he be doing this. He was getting a lot of money too, Kurt. He was fucking with Fritz and all of them. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's his story, though. You know what I'm saying? That's his story to tell. Let me make a goldie. You know what I'm saying? Tomorrow. I think he had baby house committee. I think to my wife, to my girlfriend, who, that baby house committee from from Wagner, right? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. You want to say Kurt was getting money in Melrose too? Yeah, he was getting money in Melrose too. A lot of people don't even know he was getting money over there before. But Kanye, you know what I'm saying? That, see, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was getting some money over there in Melrose. You know what I mean? The same, the same gold finger pipe bought Jim Ice. Acro Integra had that shit all white kitted up. Jim Ice from No Fair, cause I told you Kirk used to fuck with Fritz. The same one we talking about Goldfinger, he, he, he talking talk funny. Man, for Guyana, Guyanese, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look how small the world is, and some of y'all niggas bosses. Some of you niggas bosses, my man. Call him right now, last I knew he was in Atlanta. 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 Call him right now, last I knew he was in Atlanta. And he went to Atlanta early. Before before the gold rush went to Atlanta, he was out he was out there early in Atlanta. Man, Goldfinger, hell yeah, be ready. Shoot, you know what I'm saying? Go for shot my, my man Irv from Madison. Left Matt, yeah, nah, nah. he used to get money on Madison. My man Irv, uh, he from he from AK, from Lex. Smaller world is some of your bosses. Your Kurt, County Z Black City know you. Oh, that's my man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man Cut Alert though from 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 Chimot, you heard? Right. This is a dope live, man. It's a dope live, man. A lot of history came out of it. A lot of love came out of it. You see, I don't throw slang and slang at niggas. I give niggas the accolades. That's all. You know what I'm saying? We just outside, man. Outside, and one thing you have when you have respect, people ain't gonna like it to respect you. Like, nah, see, but he's cool. Respect, you see? I don't have to exaggerate the story. I know niggas. You know what I'm saying? In situations. Salute. I just, you know, like I told me, and some was locked up together in the court pits. I don't know. So shit. But hold on. Not no shit. Yo, hold on. Fly with a play. Mind you, a West Side nigga, I'm not gonna mention his name, got robbed in the court pits. And the nigga brother is a fish. In the streets, nigga still walked up for his jacket. Yo, don't let me cut you. Nigga took that butter soft shit off. I said, oh shit, that was some West Side shit. The nigga who did it was from Manhattanville. We was like, oh no. So us East Side niggas have to get together. Oh, wait a minute. He booked some of the back of the joint. This is when niggas can smoke cigarettes on the island, bro. Son had the cigarettes, so one person, see, it was a test, you know what I'm saying? Nigga said, yo, let me get a cigarette. No, nigga, yo, let me get a sit down. Yo, nah, 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 we ain't doing all that, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? We all sit together, like, nah, son, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Oh, shit, shit, shit. Nah, that wasn't me, bro. It was somebody else's, bro, from the west side, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Drew, come on, Drew. You know I'm talking about Goldie. Yeah, yeah, I'm caught in all that. You know what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> you know, that's my guy. Like I told you, I don't know the workers. I know some of the soldiers. I, I know some of the soldiers. Because niggas didn't get mad. I don't want to get niggas, you know what I'm saying? Yo, Zeke, you just do all some shit about my, you know what I'm saying? My brother getting involved in the court pens and you was official West Side nigga and nothing happened. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what happened in the aftermath for that, but I remember when the shit happened. There was some grind ball shit, nigga pulled the razor, so you don't want to cut your pretty ass. Nigga was like, nigga took the jacket off. That, that, that was the quickest wild ass in my life. Nigga said, you don't, you don't want me to cut you. Nigga was like, I right, took the jacket off. I thought it was a Brooklyn nigga who did it. He's in the back of the court pits. You looking? It's a Manhattan nigga. But you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. It do what it do. I was like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking like, damn, you don't know nigga, but the, the, the fucked up funny part is they book him, fuck you mad at us for. He looking at us like, like we supposed to get mad. Nigga, hold on, we ain't getting that. Huh? You <laughs> know what I'm saying? That's some West Side shit. Huh? 
You know what I mean? Like, you know, court pens is the court pens, bro. You know what I'm saying? Small world. I told you, man. Some niggas, I don't know them. Some niggas got popular names because they was good workers. We get it. But when we go eat the, the shrimps and lobsters, you're not there. You're still on the block with a pack in your ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You eating, laughing, choking, and giggling. Have a good time, man. But there's no one, nothing wrong with being a good soldier. Exactly. Nothing wrong with being a good soldier, but to stay in that lane. Stay cool, my lord. Stay, stay all right. Yo, I got I got some things to do, some things to attend to. I appreciate all those that pulled up. I'm going to have to change the thumbnail because I see people are just, I don't want to confuse the content. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You hear me? So, but I'm going to put the rooftop as, as the thumbnail so people don't be like, yo, Z, you clickbaiting because, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm going to change the thumbnail. I read the situation that was in the New York Times. I ain't seen no other video. I seen something. Definitely shout out to my man. Shout out to the Lynch mob niggas for pulling up. All my Johnson Project niggas that pulled up. Shout out to the whole East Side that pulled up. Huntership was in the building today. You know what I'm saying? Manny Fresh, everybody was in the building today. Shout out to White from Southern Bell. Definitely, definitely. Don't shout out to J.E. Moneybags. Yo, we here, man. Mr. Warbucks, we here. Definitely appreciate that, Ronald. With that being said, man, I appreciate you. I brought you back to 89. A good feeling, a good vibe. Salute, salute, salute. Definitely, VR is your show. We here, people. We here, we here. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, man, yo, hit my hit my um, IG, man. I'm telling you, man, yo, son, tell my man, I didn't let my man Nate. Nate, 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 Nate. I think Nate from Forster. Oh, go shoot him over there. He, was, he a West Side nigga, but he got caught, caught him because he robbed the Chinese spot, I think, on the 108th and Third Ave. Some stupid shit like that. I copy, copy, copy. That was some stupid shit that happened. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? So, so I want to, but I was never saying that, that, that the picture was, I just put LA on the picture. And I think people just looking at that shit like, nah, I just, put, I just show love to it. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep, yep. Nate. <laughs> Those niggas that, they, they, they have all the Chinese spots, him and Court. He's been caught and blown. That, 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 was, that, that was the graffiti names. He a West Side nigga. He just happened to catch a case on the East Side. Did they walk that Chinese spot on her Seventh Street? Some stupid. They was robbing Chinese restaurants. This is, can't make this shit up. They had these niggas on tape robbing the Chinese spot. They was robbing Chinese spots. <laughs> but they wrote graffiti too, so everywhere they went, they wrote their tag, Quad Blown. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they were like, Quad Blown. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. I have a, I got one hell of a fucking memory, man. <laughs> yeah, these these dudes is crazy. They used to write, used to write cause that was his cousin, Bloom. No, it was Quad and Bloom. Bloom was his cousin. Shout out to the PT 131 Graffiti Crew. You know what I'm saying? East Harlem. You know what I'm saying? ACA crew and all that. TWB Washington boys. You know what I'm saying? Um, GNR crew, say spawn side, CRT crew, zone, set plate, you know what I'm set prep, seat prep, you know what I'm saying? Deep Freeze, East Army, EA, Prince EA. Niggas is like graffiti back in the day. They don't even know that Sub Zero is Deep Freeze. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't even know that that's the infamous graffiti by the Deep Freeze. You know what I'm saying? Shop TWB, High Post crew. SMS crew, you know what I'm saying? Kid Cool and all them niggas. Bad Boy, High Post, Scar TWB. The 357 crew on the Upper East Side. RD and all them, you know what I'm saying? RDDE3. Yes, yeah, I got to give them dudes the accolades, you know what I'm saying? You know? The KRM crew, Mayor, the nigga Mayor from, from Jeff and, and Costa, 357. Shout out to Costa. You know? You know I shit, man. FTW crew, Dobie and all that. <laughs> A lot of dudes came from that. You know what I'm saying? Dog TRC. Cash TFT. Jova TDO. 
You know what I mean? Dover. What? Joey TDS Shaker 179. You know what I mean? Like, we here. Don't get it. A lot of us came from that graffiti culture. Don't get it twisted. Tagging and bombing. And that's where all the cool shit come from. You know what I'm saying? What? With that being said, shout out to Spanish Harlem, New York. East Harlem, New York. The show was about some shit I read at New York Times about the rooftop. I want to show love. I wanted to show love to, you know, I, I, got, I, got, I got to talk to Dice. Maybe I have Dice speak about his uncle. So I'm going to have to change the thumbnail so people don't think Zeke clickbait. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's a great show. I got to talk about 8089. Shout out to my man, Woods PT. Eighty nine was a good year, you heard? But that being said, yo, tell Jerry I said, man, Zeke said, what's up, man? That being said, it's love, man. Definitely shout out to my lynch mob, nigga. Shout out to 12th Street, Johnson, FTW, and you know, all that, that stick and move, you already know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? With that being said, man, I appreciate y'all. Shout out to St. Louis Wifey, Southern Bell, West Side St. Louis. Dangerous out here, too, you know what I'm saying? I just want to live in the danger zone. Um, that being said, man, peace.